Number 10, the Earth's core. I know we all want to get into some creepy spooky stuff, but let's start with a little mini science lesson. The Earth's crust is the second highest layer of the Earth, only being underneath the sea level. Then we have the mantle and the cores, which are incredibly hot and we really can't explore because, well, our machinery would likely just melt. The core is the very center of the Earth and the hottest, around 5,200 degrees Celsius. And here's where it gets weird. Scientists discovered that the core of the Earth is actually asymmetrical. They discovered that seismic waves caused by earthquakes travel faster through the core going north and south than they do going east and west. This causes the iron that solidifies on the sides of the core to grow more on one side and leaving the core lopsided. Scientists actually have no idea why this is happening, though I think it's because there's an ancient colony of dinosaurs living down there or something. I think I saw a documentary on it once. In our ninth spot today, we have the knockoff. Sometimes brand name pieces can be expensive and we want the same or similar item but cheaper. That's where knockoff brands come into play. Take a look at these cereals. They're so similar yet so different. So we got Cocoa Rice instead of Cocoa Puffs. We got Honey Nut Crispy Oats instead of Honey Nut Cheerios. Fruit Rounds instead of Fruit Loops. Marshmallows and Stars instead of Lucky Charms. Cookies instead of Cookie Crisp. And lastly, Kids Crunch instead of Captain Crunch. Now if I saw an aisle filled with those, I think I was transported to another universe. In our 8th spot today we have the map. Now let's get to a serious one. In 1929, a group of historians discovered something pretty strange. It was a map from 1513 written on the skin of a gazelle. It was created by a well known admiral of the Turkish navy. Well, what's odd is that the map included Europe and North Africa, the coast of Brazil, several islands and even Antarctica, which was not discovered until 300 years later. Not only that, but it was said that Antarctica was not covered in ice. The last time that occurred was more than 6,000 years ago. So this whole thing just doesn't make any sense. How did this man map a continent that's been covered by ice for the last 6,000 years? Maybe he's from a parallel universe or maybe the map is. In our seventh spot today, we have the stop sign. Again, another item that just makes me uncomfortable. Someone decided to create a lowercase stop sign and it looks like it's like stop, no just stop. Like it's too gentle. As a wise movie once said, no, 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 stick to the stuff you know. It's better by far to keep things as they are. Don't mess with the flow stick to the status quo. If you know what movie that's from, I automatically love you. But maybe this person was driving around in another universe. Who knows? In our sixth spot today, we have the Aumuamua artifact. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, because in another video I didn't, so now I'm changing the pronunciation. Let me know if I get it right. Just be gentle, folks. In 2017, this object was found flying by in our solar system. Now, it's quite weird. It looks like a space rock, but it's not a comet or asteroid. It's too small and oddly shaped to be an asteroid. This thing is long. In fact, this is now the most elongated known space object. Not only that, but astronomers were shocked by the condition of it. Astronomers thought that the first space rock to enter our solar system would be a ball of ice and rocks like a comet. But this isn't one. Now, not only is it not shaped like one, but there's usually a cloud of dust and gas surrounding comets, and this object just doesn't have that. But before scientists could study it too much, it left our solar system. All we know is that the strange object came from another solar system or maybe a different universe. And that's why it's so weird and unlike anything we've ever seen before. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Archless McDonald's. Imagine this, okay? You're hungry, you're driving down a road, madly looking for places to stop and eat, and that's when you see it. Off in the distance, you see two golden arches and you know exactly what awaits you. The one and only McDonald's. Except whatever universe this is in, McDonald's only has one arch. Like, hello, it's not Nick Donald's, it's Mick. So stop, okay? Or maybe someone messed up with the designing of this restaurant, I don't know. Also, since when does McDonald's sell just bags of ice? Like, look at the sign. Bag of ice, one dollar. I mean, it's a steal nonetheless, but still, that's odd on its own as well. In our fourth spot today, we have the Ulfbert Sword. Now this is something scientists like to call an out of place object. And that's because the sword dates back from around 800 to 1000 AD. 
which is shocking since they didn't have technology to make such swords back then. Swords like this were made 800 years later during the Industrial Revolution. Not only that, but its carbon content is three times higher than other swords of its time. It also suggested that in order to make this sword, iron ore had to have been heated to at least 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Again, they didn't have that technology to do that back then. So many people are perplexed. Well, there are a bunch of theories. One is that it was dropped by a time traveler, or two, it might have come from a parallel universe. One that is far more advanced than ours. But let me know your theory in the comments below. In our third spot today, we have Lost and Found. A number of people on Reddit have shared stories in which they have lost something, only for it to reappear in a place where it's impossible to. So let me explain. So one man said that he was with his cousin at Home Depot. Before they went in, the cousin grabbed his wallet, but he didn't have any pockets, so he asked the narrator if he could put his wallet inside his pocket so that he didn't have to carry it around. He agreed and he zipped it into his track pants. After shopping around at Home Depot for a bit, they went to check out, but his wallet wasn't in the track pants. So they retraced their steps thinking maybe it fell out, but nothing. So they decided just to go back to the car and return to the store later. When they got to the car, lo and behold, the wallet was on the dashboard. Which is wild, because the cousin literally handed him the wallet and he zipped it into his pants. Now, one person believes that what happened was the universe glitched, and maybe in another reality, the man just left his wallet on the dashboard. Somehow, those universes merged, hence why the wallet was on the dash. Now, it's all confusing how this stuff works, but that's me explaining it the most basic way possible. In our second spot, we have the little dino looking figures. In 1944, thousands of little dino looking figures were dug up in Mexico. Only problem is that the pieces date back back to 2500 BCE, a time when no dinosaurs were roaming around and people couldn't have possibly known about dinosaurs then. This is all according to scientists. So were there some other creatures that roamed the earth back then that we don't know of? Or is there a time traveling paleontologist out there? Imagine that, like Ross from Friends also being a time traveler, I love that. I don't know, or the object is from another universe. And in our number one spot today, we have the ring. Now this next individual has a similar story to the Home Depot boys. So for her, she was washing the dishes one day when she heard a clink in her sink. Her ring that she took off when she was doing the dishes had slipped and fell into the sink and down the drain. Now, it was just a cheap one, so she wasn't too concerned. It wasn't like her wedding ring. So she decided to just go on about her day. In the end, she forgot that the ring was even there. That was until a week later when she was putting on her shoes and felt something poking her toe. She emptied out her shoe and her ring clanked to the floor. So somehow, the ring went from being in her sink drain to in her shoe. Someone explain that to me. I don't know, maybe house elves are real. Starting off this countdown, we have the deck of cards. Now, I don't know about you, but normal deck of cards don't have number one cards. In replace, they have aces. But would you look at that? This odd deck had ones, which makes me very uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but I've never seen this before. If we're playing Go Fish and you whip out a one, I'm leaving, I'm sorry. Jokes aside, we have decks with aces because they can serve as the highest card or lowest. So it can serve as a one or more than one. That's why we don't have ones, according to Google. Don't quote me. So I don't know where this person got their cards from, but it just seems wrong. In our number nine spot today, we have the USS Princeton UFO. What's a space list without the mention of a UFO sighting? This one took place in 2004. On November 14th of that year, the USS Princeton noticed an unknown aircraft of some sort that was about 100 miles off the coast of San Diego. For two weeks prior to this, the crew had been tracking a strange flying object that would start out at around 80,000 feet before extremely quickly dropping to hover right above the Pacific Ocean. Black Aces Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate of Strike Fighter Squadron 41 went over in two fighter jets in order to kind of 
scope out the situation, and when they arrived, they saw what at first appeared to be churning water, while there was an oval shape just below the surface. After this, a white oval shaped object appeared above the water, but it had no markings on it. Like we're talking no windows, nothing that would indicate an engine, no wings, and the infrared monitors on the jets didn't pick up any sort of exhaust. The commander and lieutenant commander tried to intercept this strange aircraft, but it very quickly flew away and reappeared on the monitor 60 miles away. Like when I say quickly, I mean it was moving at three times the speed of sound and over twice the speed of the fighter jets. Like some Top Gun Maverick stuff. So faster than any kind of technology we currently have. We still don't know exactly what this was, but I'll tell you one thing. We definitely don't have that kind of technology. In our number 8 spot today we have the USO. UFO to USO. Daryl Miklos is an explorer who took a deep dive following maps that had been put together by his friend and former astronaut Gordon Cooper. The map Daryl was using was initially made to help identify more than 100 magnetic anomalies in the sea. During one dive at a location within the Bermuda Triangle where everything weird happens, he thought he was going to find an ancient shipwreck, but instead he found some Something that continues to stump researchers and Daryl himself. He came across a very strange structure that wasn't like anything he had seen before. This structure had long obtrusions which stuck out from the sides, and the whole thing was covered in coral, so whatever it is, it has been down there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Daryl has said, quote, there's identical formations in three different areas, and they don't look nature made, they don't look man made, certainly nothing I've ever seen based on my experience and I have years of experience at doing this. We've identified multiple different types of shipwreck material. This doesn't match or look anything like that. People have started speculating that this structure may just be the remains of a crashed UFO. If it isn't that, then what else could it be? In our number 7 spot today we have the Antikythera Mechanism. The Antikythera Mechanism is an extremely mysterious discovery that has stumped researchers ever since it was found. This artifact was found 150 feet below the surface of the Aegean Sea in a shipwreck, and it is the oldest kind of computer ever recorded, as it was dated back to the 7th century BCE. The author David Childress likened the finding to if they had found a jet plane in King Tut's tomb. That's how bizarre this discovery really was. Due to the complexity and oddity of the finding, alien enthusiasts have believed for quite some time that it may have been technology that was passed down from some sort of superior being. So. Aliens. When the artifact was recreated in order to learn about the mysteries it holds, the mechanism was able to calculate the position and running time of each planet. How would they have been able to create this without the use of sophisticated astronomical tools? I'm not saying that this is like concrete proof of alien life, but I don't know. There's just got to be something else at play here. In our number six spot today, we have fossilized microbes. This is a piece of evidence that came from 1996, and it is said to have come all the way from Mars. 25 years ago, scientists said that they had potentially found what appeared to be fossilized microbes in a lump of Martian rock. This rock was hypothesized to have come off of Mars after some sort of collision that the planet had and then just casually floated around in space for some 15 million years before it ended up in Antarctica in 1984. You know, just the kind of thing that happens in space. Once the rock was found and analyzed, it was found that it contained organic molecules and small specks of mineralized magnetite, which can sometimes be found in the bacteria here on Earth. Once viewed with an electron microscope, there were signs of bacteria found. Of course, with anything like this, there will always be skeptics, and some have claimed that the magnetite wasn't that similar to those found in bacteria, and some claim that the signs of nanobacteria were just grown in a lab. I'm not a scientist. Scientist, nor have I seen this Mars rock, so I obviously can't tell you who is telling the truth here, but what I can say is that neither of the people who believe this rock came from Mars, or those who claim that it's fake, can prove their point without any kind of doubt, so I'll just let you draw your own conclusions on this one. In our number 5 spot today we have quark gluon plasma. So basically, scientists believe that right after the big bang, there was this sort of really hot, goopy kind of a substance that was created, and it was made up of all different kinds of matter. Everything is moving around at the speed of light, it's hot, it's fast, and it's like cosmic soup. Okay, so experts at the Large Hadron Collider, which is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, wanted to recreate this 
space soup. You know, part of the whole trying to solve the mysteries of the universe's origins kind of thing. When they did this and got the machine to recreate this, they ended up recording the highest temperature ever. Apparently this soup was measured at 9.9 .9 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. We obviously can all understand that that is insanely hot, but just how hot? Well, that is 366,000 times hotter than the center of the sun. In our number four spot today, we have energetic cosmic rays. Energetic cosmic rays are described as high energy protons and atomic nuclei that move through space at nearly the speed of light. There are some that originate from supernova, but there are some that originate from outside of our galaxy, and those ones have scientists wondering where they are coming from and what the source of them is. As these cosmic rays flow into our solar system, their paths are bent by the magnetic fields of both the sun and the earth. Upon impact with earth's atmosphere, these rays produce a shower of secondary particles. Some of these particles do end up reaching earth, but most are intercepted by either the magnetosphere or the heliosphere. The strongest cosmic rays are extremely powerful and they can have energies of over a hundred million times greater than a man-made collider. If you're wondering why you should care about this space mystery, it's because these things have the power to cause our digital systems to crash and in our ever increasing digital world, that could cause some major disruptions to our life. That is why we care about how many of their origins remain a complete mystery that has scientists stumped. And also because shouldn't we just know where these things that are bombarding Earth's atmosphere are coming? from? Concerning is definitely the word I'd use, but honestly, what part of space isn't concerning? In our number three spot today, we have Elst Pizarro. This is a weird little object that has been stumping scientists since it was first discovered in 1979. So basically, asteroids and comets tend to be fairly easy to tell apart. I mean, an asteroid is a solid lump of rock and metal, and you tend to find them more in the inner solar system, especially in the asteroid belt. And on the other hand, we have comets, which are usually more icy objects objects that travel from the outer areas of the solar system, and sometimes when they react with the solar radiation, they have those famous tails. So when Elst Pizarro was first discovered, it was orbiting in the asteroid belt, so it was classified as an asteroid. Flash forward to 1996 and closer examination shows that it had a tail like a comet. At first, experts thought that perhaps the tail was a result of some sort of collision, which is not uncommon for asteroids, but when the brightness and structure of the tail changed over time, it became clear that it was more of an ongoing process. Basically, this object showed signs and trademarks of both asteroids and comets, and it truly was a baffling discovery. Basically, the discovery of this object led to an entirely new classification active asteroids. In our number two spot today, we have the fastest black hole. The biggest black hole that we have found so far is said to weigh about 40 billion times the mass of our sun, or about 20 times the size of our solar system. That's so scary. That's so big! Some of the outer slowest orbiting planets in our solar system, like let's take Neptune as an example, orbits at a speed of about 165 Earth years. This huge black hole, the one that's 20 times the size of our solar system, yet it orbits once every three months. Do you know how fast that is? Neptune is considered slow at going 12,148 miles per hour. The outer edge of this black hole is moving at half the speed of light. The crazy thing about black holes this large though, other than how fast they're moving apparently, is that it is believed that they wouldn't necessarily kill you right away if you were to fall into one. In fact, it's thought that you would actually survive. You just wouldn't be able to escape to tell the tale because of that whole nothing escapes the black hole thing that they all have going on. In our number one, one spot today we have supermassive black holes. Speaking of black holes, why is there a supermassive black hole at the center of most galaxies? We know that this is often the case, but we just can't quite figure out why. Every galaxy's supermassive black hole ranges in size, and we know that a stellar black hole forms from a supernova when the core of the star implodes, but we don't know how a supermassive black hole is formed. Because of the fact that the center of galaxies is where a lot of matter is boxed in, it could happen that supermassive black holes form from a cluster of regular stellar black holes, which all ended up merging together because they were in a tight, confined space at the center of the galaxy. There are other theories as well.
well, such as the possibility of these supermassive black holes being formed during the Big Bang. What I'm trying to get at is we don't know how these things are formed, or why they are in the center of most galaxies, or even if there were supermassive black holes before the galaxies even existed. Maybe one day we'll find out, but this might just be one of those mysteries that is destined to stay a secret. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have radiation proof bacteria. In 2002, Russian astrobiologists hypothesized that a bacteria here on Earth may have actually evolved on Mars. Dionychus radioduranus is the most tough bacteria on Earth. It can withstand even the most extreme conditions such as cold, dehydration, vacuum, and acid, but the craziest part is that it is virtually radiation proof. These little microbes can withstand several thousand times the amount of radiation a human can withstand, as well as more radiation than any other bacteria on Earth. You can even find this bacteria on the inside of a nuclear reactor. Scientists did an experiment to see how quickly this bacteria could could build up a stronger radiation resistance by zapping the bacteria with enough radiation to kill 99.9% .9 of it, and then leaving the remaining 0.01% to repopulate before zapping it again and repeating the process. It was concluded that it would have taken E. coli thousands and thousands of rounds to build up the same resistance that this hardy bacteria did in only 44 rounds. With this experiment, and based on the dose of radiation they gave each bacteria, it would take millions and millions of years to get even close to that amount of radiation they gave the bacteria in one cycle. Since Earth just doesn't carry that amount of radiation, it has led some scientists to speculate that since Mars is virtually unprotected and receives extremely high amounts of radiation, these bacteria may have evolved on Mars and gained their resistance in just a few hundred thousand years, and that they may have been flung off of Mars by an asteroid and then brought to Earth on meteorites. It certainly is just a hypothesis at this point, but really, how else can can we explain this random super powered bacteria that is unlike anything else on our Earth? In our number 9 spot today, we have cosmic disappearance. Some sort of unidentified thing that is larger than anything in our known universe is sucking portions of the Milky Way away. I know, it's terrifying, and it definitely is concerning, considering it's the place that we all call home. This discovery came in 2009 when researchers first found a cluster of galaxies moving at extremely fast speed towards a small area of sky. This area is located between the constellations of Centaurus and Vela, and whatever this whole thing is, it has experts completely stumped as to what it could be. For now, it remains a space mystery that has been dubbed Dark Flow, so that it can sit on the shelf with the other terrifying space mysteries like dark energy and dark matter, whatever those are. In our number 8 spot today, we have Tycho. This is what is being called a zombie star. This frightening name comes from the fact that this star was once a white dwarf, which is basically what is left over after a star exploded, but its mass was not enough to become a neutron star or a black hole. What's different about these zombie stars, however, is that they have gobbled up a bunch of mass from another nearby star, which then leads to them exploding all over again in what is called a Type 1a supernova. These blasts are insanely luminous and bright. Some even say that they have the light of one billion suns. This is all to say that they are insanely interesting objects and events that exist in the universe, and they are also thought to be helping scientists study what the heck dark energy is. In our number 7 spot today, we have Oumuamua. A few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system, and they called it Oumuamua, and it was widely agreed that it was an interstellar comet that had swung out from around another star. Upon closer examination, however, they realized that something was propelling it and causing it to accelerate, and this is when the debate started, because they just don't really know why. Evie Loeb, who's a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail, which is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that accelerates by being pushed by solar radiation. Other scientists didn't agree with this and instead said that it's possible that hydrogen ice could have melted off of the object in a way that would mimic a rocket engine or something of that nature. Avi then wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before it reached our solar system. I guess all in all we just have to wait it out while the scientists debate and gather more evidence to really know what is going on behind this one. In our number 6 spot today, we have the wandering moon. The moon is apparently, slowly, sadly, moving away from Earth. When I say slowly, I mean slowly, as it's at a rate of about half an inch a year, but still, when we're talking about our cosmic best buddy, the moon isn't only the thing that lights up our night sky, the moon plays a vital role to our 
lives here on Earth due to its great companionship and its gravitational pull. The moon's gravity is what causes the tides of our ocean, so without our moon, who knows what would happen to our marine ecosystems. The moon is also responsible for the axial tilt of Earth and how it stays in relatively the same place. Without the moon, we either wouldn't have any tilt at all, or we would be tilted all the way. This would mean that we would either have no seasons, or some of the most extreme seasons any of us have ever seen. While it doesn't appear the moon is going anywhere soon, sometimes we just have to keep an eye on her to make sure. In our number 5 spot today, we have the mysterious gap. Basically, a new analysis by scientists at MIT of ancient meteorites found something new and super interesting. In the early solar system, there was what is referred to as a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas that rotated around the sun, and eventually it coalesced into the planets that we know and love today. So this new study and analysis suggests that this sort of mysterious gap existed within this disk somewhere around, I don't know, 4.567 billion years ago, and it was in an area near where the asteroid belt is today. The reason this gap is mysterious is because it isn't quite clear what the cause of this gap was. There are a few possibilities, including Jupiter, during the time when it began to take its shape, because of its extremely large gravitational pull, it could have pushed gas and dust towards the outskirts, which then would leave a gap in the developing disk. There are other possibilities, but regardless of whatever caused this gap, it is said to have likely served as a cosmic boundary that kept material on either side from interacting with each other. In our number 4 spot today, we have a Blitzar. So normally, when stellar black holes are formed, they are the result of a large star exploding into a supernova. This then has the core normally collapsing into either a neutron star or a black hole. Blitzars are a hypothetical type of neutron star where they spin so fast that if they slow down, they'll collapse right into a black hole. I do understand that they are theoretical at this point, but some researchers believe that these stars might be an explanation for fast radio bursts should we find that they in fact do exist. In January of 2015, there were seven different events that experts thought could be attributed to blitzars, but it is thought that they actually might occur once every 10 seconds in our observable universe. The magnetic field around a blitzar would clear anything prior to it turning into a black hole, which means that no nearby material would fall in upon the initial collapse, which means that there is no burst of gamma rays or x-rays, which is usually seen when other black holes form, and this is exactly why, if they do exist, they are hard to detect. Should we come to find concrete evidence of their existence, these guys would prove incredibly valuable insight into the formation of black holes. In our number 3 spot today, we have Hoag's object. Okay, so there are different shapes to galaxies. That's not the weirdest thing in the world. You know we live in a spiral shaped one, it's beautiful, there are other galaxies called ellipticals that are more like oval shaped, but one galaxy in particular, which is now called Hoag's object, is truly like none we've ever seen. This galaxy has a yellow core, and this core is surrounded by an outer ring of blue stars that are much younger than the core, but in the middle between the two, there's just nothing, and researchers are completely stumped as to how this could have formed. The galaxy was first discovered in the 1950s, and since then, there is one leading theory as to how it could have been formed, but it still isn't concrete. Basically, this leading theory suggests that perhaps a small galaxy sped through a larger disk-shaped galaxy, which then created this bizarre situation, but the problem with this theory is that there are no signs of any nearby galaxies that could have served as this sort of bullet in this scenario. If that happened, it also would have sped up the core of Hoag's object, but we can observe it as moving quite slowly, so that also rules out this theory. There there have been other galaxies discovered that have some similar characteristics to this one, but none share all of the qualities seen in this very bizarre galaxy. In our number 2 spot today, we have Haumea. Back in 2017, this dwarf planet passed between Earth and a distant star, which allowed scientists to get a better look at it, and thus they were able to discover some new findings. Haumea sits in an area beyond Neptune that is called the Cooper Belt, and it is actually one of the largest objects inside of the belt. Before the new discoveries in 2017, we already knew that this dwarf planet was weird. I mean, it has kind of a weird elongated shape, it has two moons, and its day only lasts four hours, which means that it's the fastest spinning large object in our entire solar system. It is thought that its fast spin might be responsible for its weird shape, but either way, scientists were quite surprised in 2017 when they realized that this strange planet actually has rings. This means that Haumea likely had some sort of collision, and probably not too long ago, relatively speaking. This collision likely happened somewhere from 1 billion to several hundred million years ago, but the search for the origins of these rings brings a whole new mystery to the dwarf planet.
planet. In our number one spot today, we have magnetars. These space things are actually a type of neutron star, but what makes them different is that they have this insanely powerful magnetic field. Like we are talking 1,000 times stronger than a regular neutron star, or about a trillion times stronger than the magnetic field that Earth has. That means that these type of stars would have enough magnetic power to wipe every credit card on Earth, even from a distance halfway to the moon. They're the most magnetic stars in the entire universe. This is all very cool and interesting, but it's also important to note that if you were to venture within about 600 miles or a thousand kilometers of one of these stars, you would die very quickly. The magnetic field would destroy your body. It would tear electrons from your atoms, which would then basically turn you into a cloud of monotonic ions or single atoms without electrons. This is all to say that next to black holes, these are one of the most bizarre objects in the entire universe. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Dragonfly 44. This is what is called an ultra diffuse galaxy, and it is located in the Kama Cluster. This galaxy is of concern because of some interesting observations that were made in relation to it back in 2016. Basically, this galaxy was first discovered because of the influence it is having on our Milky Way galaxy. Astronomers noticed some strange sort of ripples in our galaxy and subsequently realized that this was due to the pull of Dragonfly 44's gravity as it orbited around our own. Of course, once it was realized that this galaxy was the culprit, experts started looking into the galaxy more, and that is when it was realized that this galaxy is actually quite dark. In fact, we can only really see this galaxy due to four bright stars that shine out of the otherwise dark, gloomy galaxy. This has led to the hypothesis that this galaxy must be largely made of dark matter. This is extremely interesting because not only is dark matter one of the most pressing mysteries of space, but this galaxy was found to be made up of 99.99% dark matter. Some even say that this galaxy shouldn't even really be able to hold itself together with so few stars. This is all to say that this galaxy is extremely interesting, and with further investigation and research, it may just be the key that helps us understand what in the world dark matter really is and what it's made of. In our number nine spot today, we have 2022 AE1. Just a few months ago in January, as the year began, scientists were watching an asteroid dubbed 2022 AE1 that became the riskiest one observed in over a decade. The initial observations of this asteroid placed it impacting with Earth on roughly July 4th, 2023, which would mean that there would not be enough time to deflect it, and this asteroid asteroid was large enough to do some real damage should it strike an area. Yeah, it was most definitely a cause for concern. There was a week where the moon outshone this asteroid and so experts weren't able to see it and continued tracking its path, but once the moon was out of this phase, the risk seemed to have diminished. As of now, this asteroid has been taken off of the risk list, but who knows? It seems as though things can change quite quickly and unexpectedly outside the cozy home and protection of our atmosphere. In our number 8 spot today, we have a meteorite. On February 28th, 2021, reports came pouring in from across the UK of an unusual streak of light that was seen in the sky. These reports were far behind the UK's Fireball Alliance, though, as their cameras had already picked up the signal and they were already in the midst of estimating its landing site. That's right, this streak of light was a meteor if the title didn't give it away. It's a remnant of our early solar system that has been flying through space at unbelievable speeds until it came down through our atmosphere and ended its long, awesome journey scattered in a bunch of pieces across rural Gloucestershire. Teams were sent out to be responsible for the recovery of the extraterrestrial material, which was found in a family's driveway as well as in a sheep's field nearby. This meteorite is a rare specimen known as primitive carbonaceous chondrite, which is said to contain materials that have been essentially unaltered since the formation of the solar system four and a half billion years ago. The pieces of this meteorite can give us insights into the building blocks of the planets, and it can potentially give us clues as to how the Earth came to be this wonderful planet that possesses all of the resources necessary to sustain human life. In our number seven spot today, we have King Tut's meteorite. So I actually learned about this one from Taylor since he's the little history bee and it is so interesting. Quite recently, researchers made quite the discovery that actually solved a mystery surrounding a dagger that once belonged to King Tut 3,400 years ago. An analysis of the king's weapon found that it was actually forged out of meteorite just outside of Egypt. 
That is so cool. This whole artifact and the way it was forged is one of the greatest mysteries in history. It is exceptionally unusual in the fact that it was made out of iron, which is a material that the Egyptians would not begin to smelt for another 500 years. This was just one of the many treasures that was found within his tomb, and one that continues to add to the incredible accomplishments of the ancient Egyptians. In our number 6 spot today we have Tabby Star. This star, which has also been referenced as the WTF star, is an F-type main sequence star which is located in the constellation Cygnus about 1470 light years away from Earth. This star is of particular importance because of the fact that it shows unusual light shifts, which includes a 22% dimming in brightness. Basically, from our point of view, something continually blocks the star, and it likely isn't a planet because a Jupiter sized planet would only block about 1% of the star the size of this one, so what could it possibly be? There are a few theories out there surrounding this anomaly, but none are able to fully explain what is happening here. Some believe that it is some sort of uneven ring of dust orbiting the star, and others believe that the star's luminosity fluctuates depending on the efficiency of the heat being transported to its photosphere. These are just two of the theories surrounding this star, but there are many more out there, and at this point, we just don't know. Hopefully though, the James Webb Telescope, which was launched at the end of last year, will be able to get a more clear picture of what may be happening over there on Tabby Star. In our number 5 spot today we have new material. Of course when meteorites show up to earth people are dying to get their hands on them to study them and see what all they contain. We get some pretty incredible deliveries of things that arrive on meteorites and analysis has been able to identify about 300 minerals in different space debris that comes down to earth and 40 of those are ones that have only been found in meteorites. This is all very cool and interesting but one of the most fascinating is the Allende meteorite. This is one that exploded over Mexico in 1969, and after analyzing samples from it, in 2012, scientists announced the discovery of a material that had never been seen on Earth, and that frankly, no one knew was even possible to make. It was called pangite, and it consists of quite a strange variety of elements, including titanium, zirconium, and scandium. In our number 4 spot today, we have CFBD SIR2149. Ah yes, the rogue planet with the easiest name to remember. This planet really had the scientific community on edge in 2012. This is because most of the planets we are familiar with orbit a star. I mean, look at the one we're most familiar with. We clearly and thankfully do. That's not the case for this guy though. CFBD SIR2149 seems to just be drifting across space without any sort of star. This planet is also huge. It is thought to be seven times more massive than Jupiter, and Jupiter is quite a bit more massive than Earth. This isn't necessarily anything that we need to worry about. I mean, we're at home in our solar system with our star, not wandering around the universe or galaxy, so that's good. I mean, let's just hope it stays that way. Astronomers believe that there are likely billions of rogue planets and that they might even outweigh the amount of planets that have suns. In our number 3 spot today we have shooting stars. Okay, so we often look to the night sky in an attempt to see a shooting star, and the chances might be pretty good depending on how light polluted the area is. I mean, either that or you're seeing one of the Starlink satellites, but either way, we know that shooting stars aren't really stars at all, and are instead meteors burning up as they move quickly through Earth's atmosphere. But what if I told you that there really are some shooting stars that are actually stars. Hypervelocity stars were discovered by astronomers in 2005, and it is thought that they occur, or form, when a binary star system, or a star system that has two stars, gets destroyed by a black hole. One of the stars in the system will usually fall into the black hole, which just may send the other one flying across through space as fast as millions of miles per hour. It's definitely not the same thing that we think of when we think of shooting stars, but it is quite the galactic event. In our number 2 spot today we have Kassars. If you aren't exactly familiar with them, they are super compact objects that kind of have a star-like appearance as they are very luminous, and it is thought that these guys are powered by supermassive black holes. So there's obviously quite a few interesting things about these, but one of the most interesting is in relation to one in particular called APM 0827952255. This one contains a black hole that is surrounded by a vapor cloud, and within the cloud is a 140 trillion times the amount of water on the Earth. It's the largest water reservoir ever discovered. That's insane. 
Researchers believe that this giant watery cloud formed long, long ago, just 1.6 billion years after the universe itself. In our number one spot today, we have stardust. Just a few years ago, researchers in Australia made a startling discovery. Ancient grains that were discovered inside of a meteorite that had landed inside of the country were studied and it was revealed that they were actually grains of stardust. This dust was formed somewhere from 5 to 7 billion years ago and it is now the oldest solid material ever found on Earth. These kinds of pre-solar grains are a very rare find. In fact, they're so rare that they're only found in about 5% of meteorites that have fallen to Earth. This is a fascinating discovery because having something like this really is the next best thing aside from having the actual star itself and it gives insight into our universe billions and billions of years ago. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have space energy. While a team of astronomers was working to map out the universe, which for a second, imagine that's your job. What a task. Anyway, while they were doing this, they found a very mysterious object that is sending out bursts of energy every 20 minutes. This object is somewhere around 4,000 light years away, but despite this distance, it was sending out energy bursts that were so big that it was one of the largest radio sources in the entire sky. That's no easy feat. These energy bursts were occurring in a cycle where one would happen for one minute every 20 minutes before it would disappear for a few hours and then this whole thing would repeat over again. There is nothing that we know of in this universe right now that would behave like this, so at the moment, while there are of course many hypotheses and theories, this is a mystery waiting to be uncovered. Number 9. The hands resist him. I listed off some dark paintings not too long ago, but somehow I forgot the hands resisting him. Painter Bill Stoneham created this work of art back in 1972. It's most famously belonged to actor John Marley from The Godfather. He's the guy who wakes up with the horse's head in his bed, in case you have seen that movie. So that actor got this painting at one point, but later it was found on eBay with claims that it was cursed from an anonymous previous seller. And the painting was found abandoned in an alley behind a brewery. So that sounds pretty promising. Almost immediately, the new owner of the painting, the family, their daughter claimed to have seen people in the painting move. Yeah, on top of that, apparently the figures would leave the painting and mess up the house. I mean, as far as excuses go, that's not bad for a messy house. Oh, I cleaned up earlier, but those damn paintings. Oh. Number eight, cursed phone number. The song 8675309 has been stuck in my head for about 18 years now. That song is a banger. Honestly, great jingle too. If a pizza place had thought of that jingle at first, would have been game over if you ask me. A cursed phone number. Is there such a thing? Apparently, yes. 359-888 and then a bunch of eights afterwards. I don't want to say it out loud you know? So what's the deal here? Well, anybody who's had this phone number in the last 20 years or so has met their fate almost immediately after. CEO of a Bulgarian phone company, Cancer, at 48, that's how he passed away. Two criminals later on, both a little more mysterious than Cancer, they both passed away afterwards. All these deaths happened within four years. That's the cursed aspect of it all. The phone number was suspended, so nobody's able to use it now. In case you're thinking about it, don't do it. Maybe it's because of this curse, or maybe it has ties to crime. Either way, 8675309 is still stuck in my head. I'm gonna go down with that song right as soon as we're done here. Number seven, the Bassano vase. This vase comes from the 15th century. It made for an excellent wedding gift in Italy, but the night before the big day, the bride sadly lost her life with the vase still in her hands. The family kept it afterwards, of course, but as the vase was passed down the family line, a pattern began to unveil itself. Whomever held possession of the Bassano vase died shortly afterwards. Now, keep in mind, this was the 15th century, so the average lifespan around then was like, I don't know, 30 years old. But after that many deaths in the family, it was packed away for good, just to be safe, or so they thought. The vase showed up again in 1988 alongside a note. The note was pretty to the point. It said, beware this vase, it brings death. Whoever found it was probably like, okay. They continued on with the vase and later it was auctioned for over $2,000, sans note, of course. You don't wanna throw that in there. The pharmacist who won the auction, you guessed it, passed away within months. Number six, Baker's wedding dress. Why is it in so many horror movies that the ghost is always a lady in a white dress? Why are there so many ghosts in nightgowns? What's going on? Why are you all so sleepy? Maybe they're taken out before their wedding night over a vase, or maybe it's this one. Back in 1849 in the small town of Altoona, Pennsylvania, Elias Baker and his wife Hetty lived in the Baker Mansion. They had two sons and one daughter named Anna. Anna had fallen in love with one of her father's employees, another steel worker, but after her father wouldn't allow the relationship to take off, <sighs> classic, Anna vowed to never marry anybody, and she locked herself away in her room. Now, when her father passed away in 1848, she went to go find her true love again, but he had since settled down with somebody else. So she spent the rest of her days behaving 
behaving erratically and her soul still haunts that same wedding dress today. The wedding dress she never ended up using. Not just the dress, the mansion is haunted as well. Guests would report furniture moving around by itself. Honestly, it's not a bad haunting if you ask me. Moving couches? That would be a great help. I have a terrible back. I would love that. Number five. The Crying Boy Painting. Just the name alone. Okay, I want nothing to do with this one. Yeah, we're back with another haunted painting. What is this, Hogwarts? Why are so many paintings moving around at night? This English curse kicked off in the 50s. Now, this is a reproduction of Bruno Amadio's The Crying Boy Painting, but this painting is apparently responsible for lots of fires. In September 1985, a family's home burnt down, everything was gone, but the painting looked untouched. British tabloid The Sun even published a story on it, which I'm sure helped the situation. It read, Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy Picture. Now we laugh at beliefs from the Middle Ages and all that, but we're not really much further here, are we? People smoking in every house in the 50s were like, yeah, maybe it was a painting. It was probably that. Number four, the Hope Diamond. Coming from the 1660s, this curse began when a gem dealer named Jean-Baptiste Tavernier bought this large diamond when visiting India. He bought it, apparently, okay. The origins of the diamond were unknown, but it didn't matter. This beauty was just sitting there and he had to. Well, later on, after Tavernier got the uh, diamond, rumors spread throughout Europe and the United States that Tavernier actually stole the diamond from the statue of a Hindu goddess. The newspapers actually kicked this one off by publishing the Hope Diamond as an ancient curse. The diamond at one point ended up in the hands of King Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette. Now if you don't know about them in history, they were, they lost their lives during the French Revolution. We'll say that. The old guillotine dream team. The stone then went to Lord Francis Hope come 1839 and by that point it was deemed cursed officially. This is when it got the name the Hope Diamond, right? They ended up selling the diamond shortly after being reduced to poverty. Then Evelyn Walsh McLean bought the stone in 1912. Shortly after, her son was killed in a car accident. So just bad news all around. When the stone was delivered to its final and current home, the Smithsonian, back in 1958, the driver delivering the package was later hit by a truck. He survived, but shortly after, his house caught fire. Moral of the story, you don't need diamonds for more reasons than one. Number three, the Anguished Man. Historical paintings are cool, but this is the first time I've read up on the Anguished Man myself. Gotta admit, it's pretty unsettling. Wow. It's considered one of the most haunted objects in the world, and it looks Looks like it too. Definitely would, I would guess, I'd pick it out of the crowd. This oil painting was created by an unknown artist, but the actual paint is mixed with their blood. So their legit DNA is in this painting. Blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Not much is known of the artist as he passed away shortly after, but the current owner is Sean Robinson from Cumbria, England. His grandmother had given him the painting. There wasn't much known beforehand, but his grandmother warned him that it was cursed. Hey, here's some Werther's originals and a cursed painting. Classic grandmas, you know how they do. Sean had to leave it in his basement at first because his wife wasn't a fan more than fair. But when the basement flooded, which is also mysterious and that sucks, he had to then move it upstairs. After that point, the couple heard crying, screams, whispering all throughout the house, things you don't want to hear alone in a house with a haunted painting. It got so bad, Robinson uploaded time-lapse footage to YouTube in 2011, and it shows the door closing by itself next to the painting. Check it out. Also, yeah, keep this in the basement for sure. I agree with the missus on this one. Number two, broken mirrors. It doesn't matter who you are, you've heard of this one at some point. You break a mirror, and what do you get? Bad luck. You get seven years of bad luck. Has this happened to you? If so, what year are you on? Are you close? How close are you to the seven year mark? We got your back. You got this. You're so close. Ancient Romans kicked this one off. They believed that the human soul would renew every seven years. That's where the whole seven year thing comes into play. It takes time to repair the human soul, apparently. That combined with the belief that a mirror's reflection was a way into the soul, well, now we have one guy who feels really bad for breaking a mirror, essentially. Therefore, a curse. If you break a mirror, you're tearing the soul from the body and abandoning it. In Kazakhstan, if you break a mirror, evil spirits would haunt the person responsible for the damage. That's a pretty scary deal. You gotta keep those hands grippy. They say you can't look into broken mirror pieces afterwards or else that's bad luck in itself. There's too many mirrors now, honestly, cut to today. I'm sure ancient Romans had no idea what 2022 would look like. We have phone cases with mirrors in them now. That's a lot of bad luck in jean pockets, my friends. And coming in number one, curse of the billy goat. Can a team be cursed? Is that such a thing? Here we go. I mean, I live in Toronto, home of the Maple Leafs, and we don't, we don't see a lot of wins on that side, but the Chicago Cubs curse, well, that was a huge deal for a very long time. The Chicago Cubs curse comes from 1945, when a man named Bill Sionis, nicknamed Billy Goat, he was kicked out of a Chicago Cubs game. Yeah, he actually didn't even get into game four to begin with. Was he too intoxicated? No. Did he bring a live goat with him to this game? Yes, that was why. Yeah, Bill brought with him his pet goat for good luck. So after the staff said, no, you can't 
entered the 1945 World Series with a live goat. He then cursed the club over and over on the way out. What a guy. Saying the Cubs ain't gonna win no more over and over again. And that was the game that they dropped the ball. So something kind of happened. The Detroit Tigers won and the curse of the Billy Goat kicked off. And it got so out of hand that come 1994, the Cubs had lost 12 games in a row, their worst home start in history. So Sam Sayanis went to Wrigley Field. Everybody was chanting to let the goat in. And then the Cubs won 5-2. I don't know. Humans in the 1700s were like, oh, that woman's cursed. She's a witch for sure. And then humans today are like, ah, oh, that stadium's cursed. For sure cursed. We haven't changed. Moral of the story. I don't know. Number 10. The Busby Stoop Chair. Yeah, we're kicking this haunted list off with a chair. It's pretty spooky. Let's do it. The Busby Stoop Chair comes from 1702, 10 years after the Salem Witch Trial. So take this one with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? People made odd choices back then. Women were witches and chairs were evil. Welcome to 1702, folks. Englishman Thomas Bubsy had some issues with his father-in-law and he didn't handle them too well. So now he has to be, you know, hanged for it. Yeah, you can't just kill people for no reason, Thomas. What is this, 1692? He was hanged near the humble inn. I Ironic, but a chair that was nearby is now said to hold the spirit of one Thomas Busby. If you sit on this chair, you are set to die in a frightful accident. So the chair was declared haunted, but did anything actually happen? Honestly, yeah, kind of. Locals say that during World War II, airmen from a nearby base came to the pub, the inn rather, and those who sat on it never returned. In the 70s, more accidents were connected, but they still kept the chair around until 1978. It stayed in the inn for that long until it was donated to the Thirsk Museum. Honestly, it's not even a rocking chair. It looks like it should be a rocking chair, but it's not a rocking chair. That's the scariest part, if you ask me. In our number nine spot today, we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years, the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle, which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone, and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are always those who try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issue start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from its home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull resides in the Burton Agnes Hall in England, and it is thought to have belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith. It is said that Catherine was the youngest in the family, and she was the one who enjoyed wandering around the property the most. One day while she was out strolling around, she ended up being surrounded by a group of robbers who took all of her possessions, and then viciously harmed her and left her for dead. She was found and brought back to the hall to be tended to, but unfortunately, a few days later, she succumbed to her injuries. Before she died, she was upset about the the thought of leaving her family, so she asked them to remove her head after death and keep her skull so that they would always have a piece of her around. The family agreed to her face, but after her passing, they buried her body, head still intact, because to be fair, it was an odd request. After her burial, the family began experiencing some extremely strange things around the house, like bumps and moans and horrible blood curdling screams that they could not find the source of. This is when they decided to follow through with the request Catherine had left them and the strange occurrences suddenly stopped. After this, at one point, a maid had found the skull, and in her surprise, she threw it out of a nearby open window, and alas, the strange occurrences began again. In the end, it was decided that the best policy was to place the skull in a secret spot within the walls of the house, probably behind some paneling in the Great Hall so that its presence could be easily ignored, and so that Catherine's spirit could reside in peace in her beloved home. I guess the lesson of this one is to follow the wishes of those who have passed, because you never know if their spirit is going to stay lingering around afterwards? In our number 7 spot today, we have the haunted doll. There's quite a few haunted dolls kicking around out there apparently, but this one doesn't exactly have a name. The doll's owners say that this doll is possessed and causes lots of troubles at night. The incredibly creepy thing about this one is that it is said that you don't need to do anything in order for this doll to decide it wants to haunt you. You just simply need to be around it, and that is more than enough for the torment to start. Owners of the doll have reported getting a bunch of strange scratches, which they believe are because of the doll. It isn't exactly clear where the spirit or spirits that reside in this doll have come from or what happened, but the doll was bought from its previous owners by a woman named Deborah Davies, who is a psychic. 
Deborah reported the same scratches as the previous owners, but she also may have been able to contact the spirit residing in the doll. She claimed that the spirit was that of a young girl who had her life taken from her, but she also reported that the nasty evil energy within the doll is a male, and she believes that this energy is that of the man who took the life of the girl. At the end of the day, whatever is haunting this doll is certainly a spirit I would like to stay far, far away from. In our number 6 spot today we have the ballista balls. A ballista was used in the Roman military and it was kind of similar to a crossbow, but much larger and it could shoot arrows or stones. In 1989, there were archaeologists that were working by the Israeli-Syrian border when they found these large stones close to what seemed to be the remains of a ballista, but around 1995 the stones ended up getting stolen and it took a while for anyone to notice. Fast forward to 2015 and the same stones that were stolen ended up in the courtyard of a museum in Israel with a note left from the person who stole them. The note explained that ever since they took them, he had experienced terrible luck and believed the stones were the reason. He had a very successful business that suddenly began to fail after he took the stones and later his family abandoned him and he was forced to get rid of almost all of his possessions to settle all of his debts so as to not go bankrupt. He mentioned that he believed the stones were cursed and that they were the root of all of his problems. Whether or not these stones are actually cursed or if this was just some pretty heavy karma, I hope this guy has been able to get his life back on track. In our number 5 spot today we have the Golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which is 14 too many if you ask me. It was said that this car started out as a police car originally, but then there were 3 officers assigned to this car who all ended up taking their lives and other people's lives in horribly violent ways. Not in the car, but still. Super weird that this all seemed to happen after they had been using the car for work. Because of this strange correlation, it ended up being sold off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it was said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning, and another ended up being decapitated by an 18 wheeler. It is said that the curse is so strong that one kid decided to merely touch the car and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes that I can't even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home far, far, far away from everyone else. In our number 4 spot today we have the Myrtles Plantation Mirror. Myrtles Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and her two children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave at the plantation who drew up a plan to get revenge on the owners of the plantation, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them, but it ended up only being Sarah and two of her children who consumed the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus the haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection as well as the handprints of small children on the glass despite continuous polishing. In our number 3 spot today we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th of 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was of course an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any kind of evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby, but this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for 5 months and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken taken place 5 months prior. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments if you think the witness saw a cursed reenactment of the fatal crash, or if you think something else is at play here. In our number 2 spot today we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the incredibly young age of just 31.
31 years old, and there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring was one that he picked up from a California jeweler. Before purchasing it, there were warnings of the stories which claimed this ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said that after this ring came into his possession, his luck began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career began to struggle. From there, he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away, he was wearing this cursed ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill and decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led the ring to now being placed in a bank vault, all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone ever again. In our number one spot today, we have Letta the doll. Why do all the cursed dolls look like they would be cursed? You know what I mean? Like there's no cursed doll out there that is surprisingly cursed. They all look creepy to begin with. Anyway, Letta is a doll that is said to be around 200 years old and extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short, as its full name is Letta Me Out of Here. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house, which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. This creepy discovery came 47 years ago, and apparently Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places, some people have seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll sized scuff marks around the house as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to a child who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the little boy, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all the creepiness surrounding this cursed doll. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Crying Children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who was known as Giovanni Bragolin, but his real name was Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering children, and this is where he got the idea for the series of crying children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused these paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same power as the originals. In our number 9 spot today we have the Iceman. Okay, this one is not an object because it is rather a mummy who was once a real living person, but I still had to include him on this list today because this story is wild. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otsal Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BCE and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, we're currently at person number 7 within one year, so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Otzi, he passed away from a blood related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, fell to his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Otzi. Dieter Warneck, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to find the mummy, died of a heart attack at age 45 just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone has ever had. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Hope Diamond. This gorgeous, unusually large diamond is a blue color and worth an insane two. $250 million. In the off chance you have that kind of money laying around, I still wouldn't recommend purchasing it because it is
is said to be cursed. The curse dates back to the 17th century and it is said that whoever wears the diamond will have great misfortune and misery. Legend goes that the diamond was stolen from the eye of a sculpted statue of the Hindu goddess Sita and since then it has been cursing whoever owns or possesses the 115 carat diamond. Stories of the horrible fates of those who have since owned the diamond include people taking their own lives, people being killed intentionally by others, and some accounts even claim that the owner was quote torn to pieces, which sounds like one of the worst fates out there. There have since been replicas made of the stone and I think just to be as safe as possible I'll probably stay away from those. Just in case. In our number 7 spot today we have Robert the doll. Annabelle gets a lot of attention for being a haunted doll, but Robert is just as terrifying. Robert the doll was a childhood birthday gift from a grandfather to his grandson who was also named Robert, but more often went by Jean. The story claims that while growing up with Robert, Jean would often be heard by his parents in his bedrooms having conversations with himself in two entirely different voices. His parents would sometimes be woken up in the middle of the night to the sound of Jean screaming, only to find him completely frightened in bed with overturned furniture around him. Jean would then blame Robert for all of the strange happenings and at the time no one really believed him. Jean kept Robert into adulthood and it became what people would describe as an unhealthy relationship. Apparently Jean took Robert everywhere with him and spoke as if he was a living entity rather than a doll. Ok this story is already not great, but it gets worse. Jean lived in a house as an adult that was called the artists house. Robert would be left in the upstairs window where children in the area reported seeing Seeing the doll disappear and reappear, and they all chose to just stay clear of the house. After Jean passed away in 1974, a woman named Myrtle purchased the house and apparently Robert as well. Visitors of the house could swear that they could hear footsteps and giggling coming from the attic where Robert was, and some even claimed to see the doll's expression changed if someone spoke poorly of Jean. Myrtle reported Robert moving around the house on his own, and after 20 years, she decided she had had enough and donated him to a museum. Robert still lives in the museum where he is safely locked up, but it is said that he still likes to place a little curse on those who take his photo without permission. The walls of the museum near Robert's glass case are riddled with notes from previous visitors and naysayers who are begging Robert for his forgiveness and asking him to remove any curse he has placed on them. In our number 6 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring was originally made of clay and it was found in 1860 in the Valley of the Kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high priest. It was then passed on to Howard Carter who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weird though. Howard is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb and he would later tell people he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened, also known as the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection and that just might be true because he is the only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death death after the opening of the tomb. Even those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subject to this curse with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that the ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis ring is more like an anti-cursed object? I don't know, but what I do know is that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm not sure if any hold the power of the real deal. In our number 5 spot today we have Thomas Busby's chair. Thomas was a man who lived in Thirsk, North Yorkshire and wasn't known as a very nice man, but he really loved his chair. I guess we all gotta have something. In 1702 he found his father-in-law sitting in it and it sparked an argument between the two. The father-in-law threatened to take his daughter back, which like should have never been a threat considering she's a grown woman, but I guess that's what went on in 1702. Anyway, that's when Busby kicked him out of the house. After this, Busby ended up going over to the father-in-law's house and actually killed him with a hammer and then hid his body in the woods. Of course the body ended up being found and this led to Busby getting convicted and sentenced to death. It is said that on his ride to the execution he asked to stop by his favourite pub for a beer and this request was fulfilled. Apparently as he finished his drink he said, May sudden death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. I really don't know what it is with this guy in his chair, but while it currently resides in the Thirsk Museum, it has been recorded that many terrible fates have been met by the people who have sat in the chair. In 1972 it was decided to hang the chair from the ceiling so that no one could ever sit in it again which is probably for the best. So now, knowing this story, I want you to let me know in the comments if you had the chance, would you sit in the chair? I wouldn't. <laughs>
<laughs> In our number four spot today, we have Annabelle the Doll. When I saw the 2014 Annabelle movie, I had no idea it was actually based on a real life doll, but since starting my job here at Most Amazing Top 10, I know all about the real story. This doll now resides inside of the Warren's Occult Museum, where it absolutely belongs, but this story starts off with a college student named Donna who received the doll as a gift from her mother, who had purchased it from an antique store. Donna and her roommate started to notice some pretty creepy things happening and swore that the doll was moving. They said it would appear in different places and positions throughout their apartment before things began to escalate. Donna began to find notes that said help in her apartment and one night found the doll in a different position and covered in some sort of red substance. The girls then decided to contact a medium who solidified all of their beliefs and told them that the doll had been possessed by the spirit of someone who was killed in their apartment building. For some reason the girls didn't immediately get rid of the doll and the story goes that their friend Lou, who was at the girls apartment, heard strange noises one night and went to investigate and he was then attacked and killed by Annabelle. The girls finally contacted a priest who told them that the doll was possessed by a demon straight from hell and then put them in contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren. They tried to do an exorcism on the doll but it apparently failed and now it is kept in a glass box in the museum where it hopefully cannot and will never do any more damage. In our number 3 spot today we have the Uluru Rock. The Uluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to this place. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked not to take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Well, other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and even sometimes the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often at least one a day is expected. Maybe Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it just seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 2 spot today we have the Bizano Vase. The Bizano Vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breath she vowed to have her revenge, and at this point it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed, or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came a mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found the vase did not listen, and instead, they sold it once again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was the 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point you get where this is going. We don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground. Or maybe in space. Or maybe in the Mariana Trench. Just anywhere far away from all of us. In our number one spot today, we have the Goddess of Death. This statue is sometimes also known as the Woman from Lem. This artifact, made out of limestone, was created sometime around 3500 BC and it was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years it has belonged to many different families who have all been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner and after four years, death began to come to him and his family. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum, where it thankfully still resides, however the museum curator who handled the item was mysteriously killed a few days after. It is clear whatever curse this statue holds, it is strong and frightening. In our number 10 spot today we have the Dybbuk box. The box, which was originally just a plain old wine box, is said to have been possessed by a Dybbuk, which, in Jewish mythology, is a malicious demon that takes over the bodies 
of living people and uses them for evil. The box began to gain attention in 2001 when it was being auctioned off on eBay. The seller explained that he had bought it at an estate sale of a woman who had survived the Holocaust. When he first opened the box, he found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with a cord, a lock of black hair bound with a cord, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word shalom, a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus shaped legs. Since he bought the box, he reported that strange things began happening, such as really horrific nightmares for him and anyone who had stayed around or touched the box. And when he gave the box to his mother as a birthday gift, she suffered a stroke the same day. The box ended up in the hands of Zach Bagan, who is a paranormal investigator, and it now resides in his haunted museum. The box also gained even more attention in 2018 when Post Malone touched it and has apparently been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since. In our number 9 spot today we have The Orphan Story. This is a book that was originally written in the early 1600s, but it didn't end up getting published until 2018. The Orphan Story is about a 14 year old Spanish boy who heads to the Americas. You know, a classic kind of coming of age feel good story. Right? Well, not exactly, and that is exactly the reason it took so long for this book to be published. While the curse in this book doesn't come from the story itself, there is something dark lurking in those pages. The book's publisher, Belinda Palacios, who worked on the book for two years, explained that throughout those years, she was often warned of the cursed book and how every publisher who had tried to work on it before ended up passing away in a mysterious way before they could finish the book. When Belinda looked into this, it turned out to be true. Her research showed that those who had tried to edit the book before her either found themselves in horrible accidents or with strange illnesses. Luckily, Belinda made it through the process unscathed, so let's hope that maybe the curse has been lifted? Either way, it's probably one I'll personally stay away from. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Dybbuk box. This box, which was originally just a plain old wine box, is said to have been possessed by a Dybbuk, which in Jewish mythology is a malicious demon that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. The box began to gain attention in 2001 when it was being auctioned off on eBay. The seller explained that he had bought it at an estate sale of a woman who had survived the Holocaust. When he first opened the box, he found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with a cord, a lock of black or brown hair bound with a cord, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word shalom, a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus shaped legs. Since he bought the box, he reported that strange things began happening such as really horrific nightmares for him and anyone who had stayed around or touched the box, and when he gave this box to his mother as a birthday gift, she suffered a stroke the same day. The box ended up in the hands of Zach Bagan who is a paranormal investigator and it now resides in his haunted museum. The box also gained even more attention in 2018 when Post Malone touched it and has apparently been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Iceman. Okay, this one is not an object because it is rather a mummy who was once a real living person, but I still had to include him on this list because this story is wild. The mummy of Otzi, who is referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otsal Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BC and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the final finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing, the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under very mysterious circumstances. I mean we are currently at person number 7 within one year so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Otzi, he passed away from a blood related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, fell to his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Otzi. Dieter Warneck, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to find the mummy, died of a heart attack at age 45 just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone's ever had. In our number 6 spot today we have the Anguished Man.
man. This is a painting that holds many secrets, the first two being when and who created it. This painting comes from an unknown source and it is absolutely eerie. It depicts exactly what the name would suggest, a man looking like he is in great pain and suffering. The painting is apparently made of a mixture of paint and blood and it is said that the creator ended up taking his own life shortly after making it. Because of the unknown origins and this little tale that goes along with it, the painting already gives off some extremely creepy and Energy, but if that wasn't enough, the man who currently owns the painting claims that it is haunted. He even uploads YouTube videos of the strange happenings around the painting, and it's said that sometimes whispers can be heard coming from it. Whatever is going on with this painting, it's not good. In our number 5 spot today we have the ballista balls. A ballista was used in the Roman military and it was kind of similar to a crossbow, but was much larger and could shoot arrows or stones. In 1989 there was archaeologists that were working by the Israeli-Syrian border when they found these large stones close to what seemed to be the remains of a ballista, but around 1995 the stones ended up getting stolen, but it took a while for anyone to notice. Fast forward to 2015 and the same stones that were stolen ended up in the courtyard of the museum in Israel with a note left from the person who stole them. The note explained that ever since they took them, he had experienced terrible luck and believed the stones were the reason. He had a very successful business that suddenly began to fail after he took the stones, and later his family abandoned him and he was forced to get rid of almost all of his possessions to settle all of his debts so as to not go bankrupt. He mentioned that he believed the stones were cursed and that they were the root of all of his problems. Whether or not these stones are actually cursed or this was just some pretty heavy karma, I hope this guy has been able to get his life back on track. In our number 4 spot today we have James Dean's car. Okay, this might seem like a bit of a wild card, but hear me out. Famous actor James Dean passed away from a car accident on September 30th, 1955. He was driving his silver Porsche 550 Spider, which he had just purchased recently. This was only the beginning of the car's curse, however, as after James' passing, the remnants of the totaled car were bought by a man named George Barris. He decided to sell the parts of the car to James' fans, but when the car was being worked on and taken apart, it ended up falling on the mechanic and crushed him to death. These two incidents are more than enough to now consider this car cursed, but it still continues on. Once the people who had purchased some of the car parts began receiving them, more strange things happened. Three of the people who received parts ended up in car accidents, all of which were sadly quite severe. The shell of the car was also stolen, and to this day, it has never been recovered. In our number 3 spot today, we have the cursed stoop chair. This isn't just any old stoop chair, it's the one that belonged to Thomas Busby. Thomas was a man who lived in Thirsk and wasn't known as a very nice man, but he really loved his chair. In 1702, he found his father-in-law sitting in it, and it sparked an argument between the two. The father-in-law threatened to take his daughter back, and that's when Busby kicked him out of the house. After this, Busby ended up going over to the father-in-law's house and actually kills him with a hammer and then hid the body in the woods. Of course, the body ended up being found, and this led to Busby getting convicted and sentenced to death. It is said that on his ride to his execution, he asked to stop by his favorite pub for a beer and this request was fulfilled. Apparently as he finished his drink he said, may sudden death come to anyone who dare sit in my chair. I really don't know what it was with this guy in his chair, but while it currently resides in the Thirsk Museum, it has been recorded that many terrible fates have been met by the people who have sat in the chair. In 1972 it was decided to hang the chair from the ceiling so that no one could sit in it again, which is probably for the best. If you could sit in the chair, would you? In our number 2 spot today we have Old Nick. Old Nick is often referred to as as the Swansea Devil and his story dates back to the 1890s, although he now resides in the Swansea Museum. So back in the 1890s there was the prestigious St. Mary's Church located right in the center of town. The church decided to do some renovations and they put out some ads to hire someone. When a local builder applied for the job and was turned down, he had a major overreaction and decided he wanted to get some kind of revenge. He went and bought the row of cottages that lay next to the church and then demolished them all. In their place he built large 
large brick offices and then he commissioned the carving of Old Nick and placed him right on top of the office building looking down at St. Mary's Church. Legend goes that he even placed the curse himself by saying, when your church is destroyed and burnt to the ground, my devil will remain laughing. Some years later during World War II, a German blitz came through the town and it left most of the town, including St. Mary's, completely destroyed and burnt to the ground. But the office building with Old Nick was undamaged and remained standing. For a while, Old Nick seemed to kind of disappear, but once he resurfaced, there was a petition to put him back where he was before, as well as a subsequent counter petition to put him far, far away from the rebuilt St. Mary's Church. As of now, Old Nick resides behind glass in the Swansea Museum, and it is said that he is enclosed in glass more for our protection than his. In our number one spot today, we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years, the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle, which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone, and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are always those who try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from its home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year, the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and just follow the rules. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The report includes things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation in a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing these stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. And simply unexplainable. What's going on there? Number nine. The hands resist him. I listed off some dark paintings not too long ago, but somehow I forgot the hands resisting him. Painter Bill Stoneham created this work of art back in 1972. It's most famously belonged to actor John Marley from The Godfather. He's the guy who wakes up with the horse's head in his bed, in case you have seen that movie. So that actor got this painting at one point, but later it was found on eBay with claims that it was cursed from an anonymous previous seller. And the painting was found abandoned in an alley behind a brewery. So that sounds pretty promising. Almost immediately, the new owner of the painting, the family, their daughter claimed to have seen people in the painting move. Yeah, on top of that, apparently the figures would leave the painting and mess up the house. I mean, as far as excuses go, that's not bad for a messy house. Oh, I cleaned up earlier, but those damn paintings. Oh. Number eight, cursed phone number. The song 8675309 has been stuck in my head for about 18 years now. That song is a banger. Honestly, great jingle too. If a pizza place had thought of that jingle at first, would have been game over if you ask me. A cursed phone number. Is there such a thing? Apparently, yes. 359-888 and then a bunch of eights afterwards. I don't want to say it out loud you know? So what's the deal here? Well, anybody who's had this phone number in the last 20 years or so has met their fate almost immediately after. CEO of a Bulgarian phone company, Cancer at 48, that's how he passed away. Two criminals later on, both a little more mysterious than Cancer, they both passed away afterwards. All these deaths happened within four years. That's the cursed aspect of it all. The phone number was suspended, so nobody's able to use it now. In case you're thinking about it, don't do it. Maybe it's because of this curse, or maybe it has ties to crime. Either way, 8675309 is still stuck in my head. I'm gonna go down with that song right as soon as we're done here. Number seven, the Bassano vase. This vase comes from the 15th century. It made for an excellent wedding gift in Italy, but the night before the big day, the bride sadly lost her life with the vase still in her hands. The family kept it afterwards, of course, but as the vase was passed down the family line, a pattern began to unveil itself. Whomever held possession of the Bassano vase died shortly afterwards. Now, keep in mind, this was the 15th century, so the average lifespan around then was like, I don't know, 30 years old. But after that many deaths in the family, it was packed away for 
were good, just to be safe, or so they thought. The vase showed up again in 1988 alongside a note. The note was pretty to the point. It said, beware this vase, it brings death. Whoever found it was probably like, okay. They continued on with the vase and later it was auctioned for over $2,000, sans note, of course. You don't wanna throw that in there. The pharmacist who won the auction, you guessed it, passed away within months. Number six, Baker's wedding dress. Why is it in so many horror movies that the ghost is always a lady in a white dress? Why are there so many ghosts in nightgowns? What's going on? Why are you all so sleepy? Maybe they're taken out before their wedding night over a vase, or maybe it's this one. Back in 1849 in the small town of Altoona, Pennsylvania, Elias Baker and his wife Hetty lived in the Baker mansion. They had two sons and one daughter named Anna. Anna had fallen in love with one of her father's employees, another steel worker, but after her father wouldn't allow the relationship to take off, <sighs> classic, Anna vowed to never marry anybody. She locked herself away in her room. Now when her father passed away in 1848, she went to go find her true love again, but he had since settled down with somebody else. So she spent the rest of her days behaving erratically and her soul still haunts that same wedding dress today, the wedding dress she never ended up using. Not just the dress, the mansion is haunted as well. Guests would report furniture moving around by itself. Honestly, it's not a bad haunting if you ask me. Moving couches? That would be a great help. I have a terrible back. I would love that. Number five. The Crying Boy Painting. Just the name alone. Okay, I want nothing to do with this one. Yeah, we're back with another haunted painting. What is this, Hogwarts? Why are so many paintings moving around at night? This English curse kicked off in the 50s. Now, this is a reproduction of Bruno Amadio's The Crying Boy Painting, but this painting is apparently responsible for lots of fires. In September 1985, a family's home burnt down, everything was gone, but the painting looked untouched. British tabloid The Sun even published a story on it, which I'm sure helped the situation. It read, Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy Picture. Now, we laugh at beliefs from the Middle Ages and all that, but we're not really much further here, are we? People smoking in every house in the 50s were like, yeah, maybe it was a painting. It was probably that. Number four, the Hope Diamond. Coming from the 1660s, this curse began when a gem dealer named Jean-Baptiste Tavernier bought this large diamond when visiting India. He bought it, apparently, okay. The origins of the diamond were unknown, but it didn't matter. This beauty was just sitting there and he had to. Well, later on, after Tavernier got the uh, diamond, rumors spread throughout Europe and the United States that Tavernier actually stole the diamond from the statue of a Hindu goddess. The newspapers actually kicked this one off by publishing the Hope Diamond as an ancient curse. The diamond at one point ended up in the hands of King Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette. Now, if you don't know about them in history, they were, they lost their lives during the French Revolution. We'll say that. The old guillotine dream team. The stone then went to Lord Francis Hope come 1839, and by that point it was deemed cursed officially. This is when it got the name, the Hope Diamond, right? They ended up selling the diamond shortly after being reduced to poverty. Then Evelyn Walsh McLean bought the stone in 1912. Shortly after, her son was killed in a car accident. So just bad news all around. When the stone was delivered to its final and current home, the Smithsonian, back in 1958, the driver delivering the package was later hit by a truck. He survived, but shortly after, his house caught fire. Moral of the story, you don't need diamonds for more reasons than one. Number three, the Anguished Man. Historical paintings are cool, but this is the first time I've read up on the Anguished Man myself. Gotta admit, it's pretty unsettling. Wow. It's considered one of the most haunted objects in the world, and it looks like it too. Definitely would, I would guess, I'd pick it out of the crowd. This oil painting was created by an unknown artist, but the actual paint is mixed with their blood. So their legit DNA is in this painting. Blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Not much is known of the artist as he passed away shortly after, but the current owner is Sean Robinson from Cumbria, England. His grandmother had given him the painting. There wasn't much known beforehand, but his grandmother warned him that it was cursed. Hey, here's some Werther's Originals and a cursed painting. Classic grandmas, you know how they do. Sean had to leave it in his basement at first because his wife wasn't a fan more than fair. But when the basement flooded, which is also mysterious and that sucks, he had to then move it upstairs. After that point, the couple heard crying, screams, whispering all throughout the house, things you don't want to hear alone in a house with a haunted painting. It got so bad, Robinson uploaded time-lapse footage to YouTube in 2011, and it shows the door closing by itself next to the painting. Check it out. Also, yeah, keep this in the basement for sure. I agree with the missus on this one. Number two, broken mirrors. It doesn't matter who you are, you've heard of this one at some point. You break a mirror and what do you get? Bad luck. You get seven years of bad luck. Has this happened to you? If so, what year are you on? Are you close? How close are you to the seven year mark? We got your back. You got this. You're so close. Ancient Romans kicked this one off. They believed that the human soul would renew every seven years. That's where the whole seven year thing comes into play. It takes time to repair the human soul, apparently. That combined with the belief that a mirror's reflection was a way into the soul, well,
fault. Now we have one guy who feels really bad for breaking a mirror, essentially. Therefore, a curse. If you break a mirror, you're tearing the soul from the body and abandoning it. In Kazakhstan, if you break a mirror, evil spirits would haunt the person responsible for the damage. That's a pretty scary deal. You gotta keep those hands grippy. They say you can't look into broken mirror pieces afterwards, or else that's bad luck in itself. There's too many mirrors now, honestly, cut to today. I'm sure ancient Romans had no idea what 2022 would look like. We have phone cases with mirrors in them now. That's a lot of bad luck in jean pockets, my friends. And coming in number one, curse of the billy goat. Can a team be cursed? Is that such a thing? Here we go. I mean, I live in Toronto, home of the Maple Leafs, and we don't, we don't see a lot of wins on that side, but the Chicago Cubs curse, well, that was a huge deal for a very long time. The Chicago Cubs curse comes from 1945, when a man named Bill Sionis, nicknamed Billy Goat, he was kicked out of a Chicago Cubs game. Yeah, he actually didn't even get into game four to begin with. Was he too intoxicated? No. Did he bring a live goat with him to this game? Yes, that was why. Yeah, Bill brought with him his pet goat for good luck. So after the staff said, no, you can't enter the 1945 World Series with a live goat, he then cursed the club over and over on the way out. What a guy. Saying the Cubs ain't gonna win no more over and over again. And that was the game that they dropped the ball. So something kind of happened. The Detroit Tigers won and the curse of the Billy Goat kicked off. Off, and it got so out of hand that come 1994, the Cubs had lost 12 games in a row, their worst home start in history. So Sam Sayanis went to Wrigley Field, everybody was chanting to let the goat in, and then the Cubs won 5-2. I don't know. Humans in the 1700s were like, oh, that woman's cursed, she's a witch for sure. And then humans today are like, ah, oh, that stadium's cursed, for sure cursed. We haven't changed, moral of the story, I don't know. Number 10. The Busby Stoop Chair. Yeah, we're kicking this haunted list off with a chair. It's pretty spooky, let's do it. The Busby Stoop Chair comes from 1702, 10 years after the Salem Witch Trial, so take this one with a grain of salt, you know what I mean? People made odd choices back then. Women were witches and chairs were evil. Welcome to 1702, folks. Englishman Thomas Bubsy had some issues with his father-in-law and he didn't handle them too well, so now he has to be, you know, hanged for it. Yeah, you can't just kill people for no reason, Thomas. What is this, 1692? He was hanged near the humble inn. I but a chair that was nearby is now said to hold the spirit of one Thomas Busby. If you sit on this chair, you are set to die in a frightful accident. So the chair was declared haunted, but did anything actually happen? Honestly, yeah, kind of. Locals say that during World War II, airmen from a nearby base came to the pub, the inn rather, and those who sat on it never returned. In the 70s, more accidents were connected, but they still kept the chair around until 1978. It stayed in the inn for that long until it was donated to the Thirsk Museum. Honestly, it's not even a rocking chair. It looks like it should be a rocking chair, but it's not a rocking chair. That's the scariest part if you ask me. At number nine, we have a haunted clown doll. This sounds like the crossover no one asked for. Clowns and ghosts on their own are bad enough, but now we're packing them together in one complete package. This is like mixing a kick in the nuts with a slap in the face. It's rude and painful. Well, if you're trying to ruin your own life, then you should look this one up. You can find it on eBay for 200 bucks. So next month, why don't you skip on paying your car insurance and then put a down payment on a cursed doll that will probably make you have nightmares about being strangled to death by balloons. You know if you buy something like this and horrible things happen to you, you kind of deserve it. Instead of trying to invite Satan into your home, why don't you take your money and invest it in a nice retirement savings plan? If you make the poor financial choice of investing in this doll, you can hope to be haunted by the two dead children who apparently wake you up by shaking your bed. These ghosts haunt the doll. So not only will your life be full of demonic forces, you'll get those puffy eyes that show the public how distressed you are. Coming in at number 8 now is the bra, and yes, I am fully serious, I assure you. Now this bra was actually made in the 50s and it's a size 32A, and I feel like a lot of guys just don't actually know what that means, so I'm about to tell you. Now the number stands for the inches around a girl's bust, so the circumference essentially, and the letter is the size of the cut part itself. You're welcome. Now according to the seller of this item on eBay, Tonya underscore Rose, the bra is afflicted with the spirit of a sexy woman and still Still not joking. Wearing it will give the person a constant stream of gifts and admiration, and you can actually reap benefits from it even if you don't wear it. If you place the bra by a lit white candle, you can actually see the woman's full body apparition right in front of you, and if it's a red candle, you can engage more explicitly with that apparition. I don't even know how that would go or who proved that that happens. I feel like some people will see this as a curse and others as a blessing, so I mean, to you, boo. At number seven, we have an African 
Angula chest. At first glance, this thing looks like art your aunt would pick up after she reads a book about African history. Wow, Aunt Claire, you can really tell how you support African culture by the chest you bought that was made in China. But if you dive into the description of this a little further, you can see that this is not what it seems. Apparently, a Gula chest is a wooden urn with carvings in it that is used to house the soul of a demon. The perfect housewarming gift for a new couple. This one I found on eBay and was the home of a ghoul jinn, a spirit which is supposed to be really bad. They like to mess your life up and cause all sorts of havoc. So if there's someone in your life who you really don't like, then you should buy them this urn and have it sent to their home. The person selling this chest is a satanic priest, so you know this thing is legit. This isn't any bootleg gula chest, this is the real deal. Upon purchase, the priest will send you instructions with the chest, detailing everything about the spirit which is attached to it and how to handle it. I'm sure this is just like getting a fish. Watch a few YouTube videos and you'll be fine. A big note on this one is there are no returns. Once you buy this thing, there is no take backs. Once it is yours, it is yours. Unless you leave it on someone's doorstep. Hmm. At number six now is an African voodoo hoof rattle. Now this one actually links in with Che's African Gula chest because they're both being sold by the same damn satanic minister on eBay. Now the hoof rattle is a whopping nine inches long and there's only one like it in the whole world. Now Reverend Dante refuses to go into detail about exactly why it's cursed, he just says he finds it very unsettling. And if a satanic minister finds something unsettling, then you know something is very wrong with it because even freaking Satan couldn't scare him. Satan was a walk in the park for this guy compared to this voodoo hoof rattle. And I'm assuming because it's a voodoo rattle, it has all like the bad juju associated with said voodoo. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you're in possession of a voodoo item, your haters are just going to be dropping like flies. Just innocently. Well, I don't know what happened. <laughs> just dropped like flies. Either way, miss me with that. At number five, we have the Crying Boy Painting. If you're into collecting cursed items, this one will definitely be one you have in your storage room. Well, until it burns down. This painting has one of the most depressing histories to it. Artist Bruno Amadio saw a boy crying on the side of a step. Bruno was moved by the child, so he decided to find out why he was sad and had such a heavy burden in his heart. No, I'm just kidding. He set up shop and started painting the kid. Then he had the painting printed and started selling it, making great profits off the back of this broken child. Then the people who bought this painting had their homes burned to the ground. Apparently the child who was sad and crying alone with no one there to help him just had his family die in a house fire. The sorrow from this boy's soul now cursed the painting and anyone who buys it has their home burned to the ground. There's even a rumor that after your home burns down, the painting is the only thing left standing. So next time someone sees a kid crying on the side of the street, maybe stop and give them a little help instead of trying to capture the moment for a quick buck. Filling out of a four slot is the jewelry box, and I know jewelry boxes are always just haunted or cursed, but this one is different. Again, the bio of every boy on Tinder, and plot twist, they are not different. Now, either way, this one is an antique jewelry box with a clock inside of it, so when you open it, the clock sort of just gets lifted up like this, and the jewelry part is like a little drawer underneath, and I hope you got what I meant from all my miscellaneous gesturing. Now the Utah-based owner shared that the clock stops at 3.22 a.m. constantly, and by by now we know that the 3 to 4 a.m. window is witching our people. Not a good time. Now the lid of the box opens by itself all the time and weirdly enough almost sucks up jewelry. The owner said there have been times where she hasn't put jewelry in the box, but overnight it somehow just ended up inside of it. But then on other occasions she's woken up and the jewelry is just all over the floor like the box threw it out like it has a mind of its own. So if that sounds appealing to you, it can be yours for a mere $160 US. At number three, we have a Victorian birthing chair. Another gem from the world of eBay. If any of you at home are doing exactly what I did and are asking what the hell is a Victorian birthing chair, then let me just tell you it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a big old chair with a hole in it that you can give birth through. Think of it as a toilet if you wanted to poop on your kitchen floor. Back in the day, a lady would sit down in this and then shoot a baby right onto the linoleum. Apparently, this particular birthing chair is embedded with all the torment of who knows how many ladies giving birth on it. I think that's a top-notch way to curse an item. Just have people use it while they're going through the most painful experience of their lives. The owner says some women died in childbirth while on this chair, raising the spooky factor at least 10 points. And if you're wondering how much it's going to cost you to curse your future with the angry spirits of dead women going through labor, it's 
$300. So right now you can pick up a PlayStation VR headset or a chair stained with placenta fluid. You know this is a really tough choice, is there any chance I could call a friend or an ask an audience member? Where is Regis filming? Coming in at number 2 now is The Ring. Now this one is being sold by a seller located in Bury, London who claims a sterling silver ring has a spirit or curse of a little girl called Evie attached to it. Now The Ring is just a simple one that says sister on it. Now Evie was a young girl who was filled with hatred and jealousy towards her little sister. She despised her simply because she was a nicer person than herself and so she'd always dream up ways to harm her or she'd pretend to play nice with her when really she was just playing a nasty trick. One day they were playing in their garden and wondered off to a river nearby. They started playing on the riverbank and Evie overcome with what she thought was the most foolproof plan ever, decided to get rid of her sister for good by pushing her into the river. This is like Mufasa scar level betrayal right here, like what is this? Either way what Evie didn't think of was her sister grabbing onto her for help which is exactly what she did. They both ended up falling into the river and unable to swim they both died upstream. Now their bodies were found a few days later so based on all that the seller claims to Whoever wears the ring is immediately filled with feelings of jealousy and hatred, so much so that the person can become dangerous to themselves or others. Now again, I don't know how that would seem appealing to any of you at all, but if you are interested, it's only £28. And finally in the number one spot we have Eve, another haunted doll. Do you think demons are attracted to dolls because they're creepy or are dolls creepy because demons are attracted to them? It's kind of like a chicken or the egg situation. If you're not creeped out by Eve's appearance, then maybe the backstory will be enough to set you over the edge. Eve has the spirit attached to her. It's the soul of a young girl. This girl found her lover sleeping with her sister, killed them both, and then killed herself. Her soul is now forever tormented by being betrayed and she is now dead, of course. The person selling this doll is very eager to get rid of it because she is kept up at night from the doll crying. Heartbreak takes a long time to get over. She also said the doll causes her physical pain like headaches, but that could be because she's just not getting enough sleep. And if you're one of the brave ones out there who want to buy Eve, you should know that she's selling for $1,666. Whoa, what a spooky price. I like how the seller added that extra one at the beginning. She was like, I want to get rid of this haunted doll, but I'm also not a suck. Starting us off at number 10 is the China set. Sort of anticlimactic, I know, but I feel like the backstory of this one more than makes up for it. Three pieces of the set were found in a wad of old newspapers under the porch of a house made sometime in the early 1900s. It had clearly been there for a long ass time since it was covered by a bunch of decayed dirt and so the homeowner kind of just put it on their windowsill and forgot about it. A few weeks later, one of his old neighbors walked by and noticed the china and asked him where he got them, saying they looked really similar to a set another neighbor I used to own. Now the other neighbor was a Mrs. Dylan who used to get beaten by her husband, and then one day out of nowhere, her husband just wound up dead. Mrs. Dylan then became very reclusive and quickly moved away without telling anyone, not even her friends. The homeowner appreciated the story, but Loki didn't really care until the next morning. They found the set inside their house when they damn well never brought it inside. Both cups even had tea in them, like can you imagine? They quickly put the set in a shoebox and left it outside and it was picked up by somebody else. That someone admitted that the first time they ever cleaned and wiped it down there were three or four dips in the lights above them. And every time they've cleaned it after that the same thing always happens, the lights keep dimming. It ended up being sold to this person for $45 but I honestly think Mrs. Dylan killed her husband then left the set behind and now the spirit of her disgusting husband just cursed the set. But plot twist, in his afterlife he realized what a horrible person he was so to make up for that he just fills cups with tea. I don't know if that makes up for being an abusive husband but okay. In our number 9 spot we have the Koh i Noor diamond. The Koh i Noor diamond has been said to be cursed for centuries but more specifically for males. It is said that only God or women can wear it with impunity. All else who wears it will be cursed. It is said to bring about great wealth to all women and great, great misfortune to all men. It dates back thousands of years, but it is currently in the hands of the British royal family and it has been worn by Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. I wonder how people started thinking that the crown was cursed. I bet you some woman thousands of years ago was mad at her husband and convinced him that the crown was cursed so she could have it all to herself. <laughs> 
Like they say, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. In our number eight spot, we have The Crying Boy. This is a painting of a boy that is crying that is said to be haunted. I had never heard of it before today, but apparently this painting is widely known around the world and on the internet as possibly being cursed. The painting is literally of a boy that's really crying, like a waterfall of tears is falling down his face. I could see why people would feel something when looking at it as the energy is quite strong and of course sad. Anyways, regardless, this painting was made by a Spanish artist named Giovanni Bragolin and the painting was actually mass produced after the war in England and also so many homes caught on fire after purchasing this painting and the painting seemingly survived each time. People believed it to be cursed because, well, the painting never burned down with the houses. But many years later, the paintings were analyzed and it was proven that they had been coated with a fire repellent. It still doesn't explain all of the fires in the first place. Like, why were there so many fires after people purchased this painting? So that's why people are still very weary on this painting and believe it to be cursed. In our number seven spot, we have the Delphi Purple Sapphire. This stone is also known as the Cursed Amethyst because it's probably cursed and you should probably not touch it. This stone was apparently stolen from the Temple of Indra in 1857 and then brought to England by Colonel W. Ferris. It is said that after this, he lost all of his fortune and received an enormous amount of bad luck. Any person after him that came into contact with the stone came upon some bad luck. Allegedly, a singer lost her voice after having the stone. Whoa. It now rests in the London Natural History Museum and even even the person that brought it there said they experienced a horrible storm while en route. Coincidence? I think not. In our number six spot, we have the Hope Diamond. So many cursed jewels in the world, it almost, almost makes you believe in the possibility that it can hold energy. But wait! Everything is energy, so of course it can. We could probably go down a rabbit hole here, but whatever, I'm gonna stop myself. Anyways, the Hope Diamond is a large blue gemstone that is worth approximately $250 million. This is one of the most known cursed jewels around the world, as it has reportedly caused great misfortune and misery to whomever wears it. The reportings of misfortune date all the way back to 1653 in India, when a French merchant took the gem from one of the eyes of a Hindu idol, and eventually this merchant was eaten to death by dogs. Misfortune may be an understatement in this case. It's a good thing most of us will never get anywhere close to this object in our lifetime. <laughs> In our number five spot, we have the Blarney Stone. This is a stone located in Cork, Ireland, and it is believed to be quite powerful. Kissing the stone is said to bring a person luck, but if there is any removal of the stone, you know, even by taking a few pieces of the stone, the person who has removed it will be cursed with bad luck. Misfortunes such as loss of jobs, financial lows, and depression have been reported and associated with those that have taken parts of the stone. Apparently these parts that have been taken have been mailed back after they have felt the wrath of this curse. That's pretty funny when you think about it. <laughs> you would think mailing it wouldn't do any good unless there's someone there to put the stone back. I doubt there's some kind of employee that's, you know, unwrapping people's mail and putting the pieces of the stone back and if there is such a person, even if they're a volunteer, bless them. In our number four spot we have Elmo. Yes, Elmo, the character from one of the most iconic shows called Sesame Street, is known to be a cursed doll. Honestly, <laughs> I heard about this one and instantly it, it checked out for me because my brother had an Elmo doll and it would just start talking randomly and we totally thought it was haunted. So it's comforting to know that other people had strange occurrences with it. Apparently there is a story about a boy that loved Elmo and was gifted it and a few days after receiving it, the Elmo started saying, kill James, continuously. Whew, that's horrifying. <laughs> Definitely stay away from the Elmo doll, just saying. In our number three spot, we have a piece of all Yuru rock. 
yet another cursed rock to stay away from. This is a large sandstone rock formation in the North Territory, Australia, and apparently this place is sacred for the indigenous people of the area. They advise that no one should take anything from the site, no small rocks or pieces or anything. But of course, do people always listen when told to not do something? No. The people that have taken pieces of the formation though have reported experiencing severe illness afterwards, bad luck, deaths, and terrible breakups. It feels like we've been too conditioned by movies to believe in any real magic that we forget about where writers of movies get their inspiration from. In our number two spot, we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. There is a summer cottage in Rhode Island, and apparently in the ballroom, there are a number of cursed chairs. The idea of cursed chairs just seems so silly to me. Out of all the objects in the world, why a bunch of chairs? Well, as silly as it sounds, there have been too many sightings and experiences to count that proves this theory. People have reported feeling chills up and down their spine, and people have reported feeling a strange sensation of energy around them. Also, it has been reported by many, a feeling of being pushed down from the chairs by an unseen force. I kind of want to go there and experience that. Anyone else? But I suppose if we will be forever cursed, then maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> In our number one spot, we have the haunted wedding dress. I'm sure there are many, many haunted wedding dresses around the world. Heck, I would say any marriage that ends in divorce, the wedding dress is probably not high vibes. But this one in particular from a girl named Anna Baker is known to be quite haunted. Anna Baker was from a rich family and in 1849, she fell in love with an iron worker, AKA someone of lower breeding, as they used to say, a lower class chap. <laughs> Anyways, she was forbidden to marry him and Anna had already bought her wedding dress, oh no! Allegedly she was heartbroken and she decided that she would never marry anyone ever again and she ended up passing away single as a maid in 1914. Her house eventually became a museum and they say that her old wedding dress is haunted and many people have reportedly seen the wedding dress moving in its glass box. Yeah. It's definitely cursed. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is a place in St. Francisville, Louisiana that is known for being extremely haunted. There are so many ghost sightings and photographs, and in particular, there is a mirror where people tend to see ghosts in. People believe that the mirror holds the spirits of a mother and her young ones that passed away in the home. Apparently, a handprint continues to appear in one of the corners of the mirror, even though it continues to be wiped away by staff. Whoa! The mirror is definitely haunted and cursed. Okay, moving on to number nine, we have bunk beds. In 1987, a haunted bunk bed in Wisconsin became a topic of national coverage when a family dramatically fled their home in winter after reports of hauntings. Later, the TV show Unsolved Mysteries documented the paranormal activities. It all started when Alan and Debbie Tallman bought bunk beds from a secondhand shop and immediately noticed strange going on in their home in a small town of Horica. Soon the family noticed the radio would switch on its own and the children who slept in the bed saw an ugly old woman in their room. As things started opening and closing on their own accord in the same room as the bed, the family got their local pastor in who felt that there was a devil in the bed. After things went bad to worse, the family destroyed the bunk beds and left the house. I think they did the right thing. And now moving on to number eight, we have more craziness. We got the teddy bear. Teddy bears are supposed to be used for, you know, cuddling and comfort, not for smothering people. One teddy bear in India caused a stir on the internet in July of 2016, so it happened earlier on this year in the summertime, as footage was released on YouTube of a reportedly possessed bear. Uploader Paris Diwa captured the video in which the huge stuffed bear seems to move on its own. I mean, is this real life right now? Many YouTube viewers are questioning the authenticity of the footage, but who knows? Warning, this next haunted object has actually caused people who see the picture of it to experience shocking symptoms. Are you ready, Landon? Are we going to show them the picture? Yeah, Ooh. and there's some shocking stuff going on, so close your eyes to this next one if you're scared of that kind of thing. I'm scared. Ah! In 
At number 7 we have Peggy. In 2015 footage of a creepy doll caused absolute chaos around the world, inciting paranormal enthusiasts with many feeling chest pains and experiencing headaches and visions after viewing the pictures or videos of her. British paranormal investigator Jane Harris based in Shropshire says that she was inundated with messages after images and footage of Peggy were posted on the internet. Harris runs an organisation called Haunted Dolls and was given the doll by a petrified woman. She is thought to have the power to visit people in their dreams, even haunting one woman to warn her about her cat that died the next day. Spooky. One woman even said that she had a heart attack just hours after viewing a picture of Peggy. Mediums who have worked with Peggy believe that she is linked to the Holocaust. Terrifying. Following that, now at number 6, Bassano Vase. The story goes that a 15th century carved silver vase was given to an Italian bride on her wedding night in Napoli. That very evening, she was murdered and vowed to seek vengeance. After her death, it became clear that the family members that her spirit had somehow possessed the vase and caused death death and misery to all those who touched it. After a period of time, the vase was buried and reportedly unearthed in 1988. The vase contained a warning note about the bad luck associated with its possession. The owner auctioned it for 4 million lira, so that's around $2,500 at the time. The new owner died and triggered a similar pattern in the new era of deaths. The vase has now been buried and you should not go looking for it. Okay, this really, really creeps me out. In at number 5, we have the Anguished Man painting. To be honest, looking at this painting, I have absolutely no idea who would want to own it. It is even more terrifying than a Phoebe Buffet creation. Sean Robinson acquired the Anguished Man painting from his grandmother, who believed that the artist used part of his own blood to paint the picture. The painting is said to be haunted by the spirit of the artist, and Sean has even set up a YouTube channel to to document some of the crazy goings on surrounding the picture. This includes doors slamming and the air in the room changing to make it all cold. It is now said to be locked in the basement of Mr. Robinson's house, where I think it should stay forever, and then he should move, and no one should ever go there. Robert the doll, another doll, and this one is horrifying. Sorry, did you say another doll? Another doll. I'm out of here. There's too many dolls on this list. And as Rebecca walks off, we continue. Everybody meet Robert. Robert is a 20th century sailor doll that used to belong to Eugene Otto. Eugene used to blame many naughty things he did on Robert, and the pair would often be overheard talking. Eugene's parents assuming Robert's voice was really Eugene. When Eugene died in 1974, Robert was left in the attic and was discovered by the next owners in the home. And they had a 10 year old daughter. The small girl was terrified of Robert and claimed he wanted to kill her. Neighbors of the house would swear they saw Robert at the window on occasion and the plumber would work at the house found the doll to move across the room on its own. A reporter from the area, Malcolm Ross, visited the house to see Robert and was disturbed to sense that Robert was listening to his conversation and was understanding him. A final doll and perhaps the scariest of them all, we have the basis for the movie The Conjuring and Annabelle. At number 3 we have Annabelle the doll. Annabelle currently lives in a glass box at the Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut, run by Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens received the doll after it lived with a student nurse and her roommate in the 1970s. The doll behaved strangely, so the pair contacted a medium who suggested she was haunted by a dead girl named Annabelle Higgins. The pair tried to nurture and care for the girl, but she turned out to be malicious and evil, leading the pair to give the doll away. That was a good choice. Have we finished talking about dolls? I have a feeling we're not finished. We have. I think we have. Okay. I'm um, promise me, because if not, I'm not coming back. Okay, moving on from dolls, we got. <laughs> yeah, moving on from dolls, we have Busby Stoop Chair Mystery. Now located on the ceiling at the Thirsk Museum in North Yorkshire, the infamous Busby Stoop Chair has been linked to many deaths over the years. The story goes that a Yorkshireman named Thomas Busby, who was a fraudster and a drunkard, loved his wooden chair. In 1702, he fell in love with a young woman named Elizabeth Awity. Her father, Daniel, did not approve and came to drag Elizabeth away from their home in a local inn. As Busby arrived back in the inn, he was most offended to find Daniel Awity sitting in his favourite chair, 
So he murdered him. Normal reaction. As he was later tried and hung for the murder, he swore a curse that all that sit in his best chair will die. This chair ever since has been rumoured to be haunted by Busby himself. The chair stayed in the inn for years, reportedly taking the lives of 63 people who sat in it. One chimney sweep who sat in the chair while drinking at the pub was found hanged nearby the next morning, and it's said that all those who sat in the chair ever since who went to war did not come back. As late as the 1970s, two people died after sitting in the chair. Luckily it was then taken away and put in a museum and strung up on the ceiling so no one can sit in it ever again. Ok we are here at number 1. The possessed items on this list seem to have a varying degree of legitimacy, however this last one really does have an irrefutably concerning history. I can't get over this. At number 1 we have Franz Ferdinand's car. Many history buffs will know that World War 1 was triggered by the murder of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife in Bosnia. The pair were in their luxury graph and stiffed limousine which stalled at the very wrong moment outside a cafe from which a man who had previously tried to assassinate him was just exiting. What a crazy coincidence. Their deaths, probably caused by the stalled car in part, were not the last tragedy to befall the limo. The car's second owner, General Potirek, went insane after driving the car and was soon committed to an asylum. Many say the car is possessed by an evil spirit. In fact, throughout the war and the period shortly after, the limo was involved in 6 accidents and 13 deaths. Why are people still driving this thing? If we are also to attribute the car as the direct cause of the death of Franz Ferdinand and thus the sparker of the first world war, it could also be directly linked to the death of 17 million people, which in turn set the stage for the death of 60 million people in world war 2. So that car has some blood on its hands. Suffice to say after a final death spree in which 5 people travelling to a wedding were killed, the car was finally donated to the war history museum of Vienna in 1926 and has caused no deaths since. Thank God. In at number 10, we have the eBay mirror. So I remember reading this story a few years ago and being absolutely fascinated. Two guys living in a shared house in Muswell Hill, London, started experiencing weird goings on when their landlord hung a mirror in the house. This mirror was reportedly found in a skip or dumpster right outside the property. 20 year old student Joseph Birch and 34 year old painter Sotiris Charalambus say that they were immediately met with bad feelings, followed by bad luck, misery, and even sickness. Charalambus even said he woke up in the night screaming with stabbing pains. He attributed all of this horror to the mirror. Things became enough for the pair when Birch said he saw flickering shadows and glimpses of black darkness coming from the mirror. He then woke up with scratch marks all over himself. The pair put the mirror on eBay for £100 and sold it for just over the asking price. I for one would not want to own that mirror though. Well from worms to strange blobs in at number 9. Over in the town of Oakville, Washington, it began to rain in the afternoon. Rain in this area is actually really common, but this rainfall was extremely weird. A strange substance was falling from the sky and it caused a major concern in the area. Well these things were the size of a grain of rice. Later on the afternoon, a ton of the residents became violently ill. They had difficulties breathing, they had vertigo, blurred vision, and extreme nausea. A bunch of cats and dogs who came into contact with the substance became very sick and they eventually died. One of the residents sent a small sample of the blob to be tested and the results were shocking. The blob actually contained human white blood cells and two types of bacteria. People are saying that it came from an airplane while others are saying that it came from aliens. Well that's gotta be the logical answer right? The aliens part? A cow dropped into this list at number 8. Ok wait a minute, how the heck does a cow fall from the sky? What kind of world are we living in? Well back in 1997 a Japanese fishing ship sank and the men were rescued by a Russian patrol boat in the sea of Japan. When the men were asked what happened to their ship, they said that a cow fell from the sky and sank it. Well obviously Russians thought that this was fake news so they arrested them and put them in jail. Well that's a kind of a harsh punishment don't you think because several weeks later a member of the Russian air force told the Japanese authorities that one 
one of their crew members stole a cow for its beef and took it on their plane. The cow was acting up, so they decided to open up the hatch and moo. They just pushed the cow out of the plane. I don't know why they didn't just slaughter the cow first and then bring it onto the plane like they had a full on live cow on the plane. I, I wonder if you had to go through security. And are you allowed to bring beef on the plane? I don't know. Or at least sedate this big guy so he's not problematic. Dead birds fly into this list of number seven. I'm gonna call this bird again. A man from British Columbia, Canada witnessed dozens of birds falling from the sky. He was driving on a busy highway when all of a sudden he saw the birds suddenly hitting the ground around his car. He said that the birds dove face first into the pavement and died instantly. Well, that sounds super traumatizing. No, seriously, someone call Stephen King and tell him that I have an idea for his next book. I wanna forget this has ever happened, so you know what, let's move on. All right, number six, we have scary meat chunks. Okay, what the heck? Is it too late to go back to the birds? So on March 3rd, 1876, large chunks of a rotting flesh fell from the sky and this took place in Kentucky. Two brave men offered to taste the meat to see what animal it came from. I don't know who would offer to taste it. That just sounds so ludicrous to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're not the sharpest tools in the shed. They don't know what kind of bacteria could be on the meat. Maybe they like having ringworms or salmonella. Anyways, these two men tasted the meat. Anyways, the two men said the meat tasted like mutton or venison, but a third man said it was bear. Like, for sure. <laughs> well, how the hell do you know what bear tastes like? I would stay far away from him. Well, the mysterious meat came from a projectile vulture vomit. Now, <laughs> now that is just disgusting. And these men ate it. Sucks to volunteer on that day. Giant metal balls fall into this list at number five. Giant balls of metal were seen falling from the sky in different parts of the world. Well, that doesn't sound very safe now, does it? People over in Peru found a bunch of huge rocks in a field after they saw this in the sky. Take a look. Yeah. Those rocks are absolutely massive. They could easily wipe out the entire human race if enough of them fell on them. As it turns out, this fireball was actually a Russian space rocket that was re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Vampire fish swim their way onto this list at number four. Over in a small Alaskan town, mysterious giant vampire fish started to fall from the sky. These guys were a foot long and they were known as Arctic lampreys. They have five rows of sharp teeth and they were found laying in gardens, streets, and in parking lots. Families were so freaking terrified by these scary looking fish. Some of them were even too scared to come out of their homes. Well, you know what, I don't blame them. Take a look at their teeth. I'd lock myself into my house for weeks until the town got rid of them. There is no way in hell you would see me out there with these dead vampire fish. Spiders come crawling onto this list, or should I say come falling onto this list at number three. Eric Reese was hired to be a videographer for his friend's wedding. As he was driving to the venue, it started to rain spiders. Now I know this is a lot of people's biggest fear. Thousands of them were falling from the sky. So instead of getting the heck out of there, Eric thought it would be a great idea to pull out his camera and film the whole thing. And to be honest, this is probably something that I would do as well. I'm not afraid of spiders, but maybe if there was like a hundred of them coming down, maybe I'd be pretty terrified. <laughs> Meu Deus. But raining spiders isn't actually as strange as it seems. Apparently, the eczema spider hangs from trees and they create webs that are 65 feet in the air and in trees. They do this to trap insects, but if the wind blows too hard, the spiders can fall off the web, so it looks like uh, that it's raining spiders. Sounds pretty creepy to me. Moving up on this list, number two, we have people. On September 25th, 1978, a woman was sitting in her parked car with her young son when suddenly out of nowhere, a human body crashed just right into her windshield. I mean, that's probably one of the most traumatizing things that she's ever seen. I mean, where the hell did this body come from? Well, a Pacific Southwest plane crashed into another plane, killing 144 people. The person that smashed through the windshield was one of the victims. I just can't imagine what this must have been like. This is actually known as one of the worst aviation crashes in California's history. Blood drips onto our list at number one. 
In 2008, bloody rain was falling from the sky over a small Spanish city. The residents were scared that this blood rain was part of some sort of hazardous chemicals or it was an act of God. Priests in the village were saying that this rain was a sign from God that people will have to change their sinful ways. But, but they were wrong. According to scientists, this bloody rain was actually a lot less scary. The liquid turned out to be rainwater. It was infused with a type of microalgae. When the water mixed with the algae, it changed the pigment to red. Could you imagine if this was actually blood? Now that would be the biggest stain in history. So let's get this started in at number 10 with earthworms. Yep, that's right, thousands of earthworms were seen falling from the sky in Norway and this was back in 2015. And apparently this isn't the first time that earthworms have fallen from the sky there. A man named Karsten Ersted discovered that it was raining earthworms while he was skiing. At first he thought that these earthworms came from the ground, but there was over 50 centimeters of snow on the ground. so. Yeah, that would kind of make it impossible, wouldn't it? Well, he reported that there were thousands of worms falling from the sky, and at first he thought that they were dead. But then he picked them up, and they were still alive. I mean, this is so freaking gross. I would literally go straight down the hill with my skis and never look back. And I guess this might be a fisherman's dream, because that is like unlimited bait, if bait is just falling from the sky. Number nine, self-driving cars. If you work as a taxi or bus driver, I think it's maybe time to update your resume, because this one seems right around the corner. We've already seen the initial steps of self-driving cars with companies like Tesla. As demand increases for these products, it's only a matter of time before technology becomes more affordable and every company on the planet is making some version of a self-driving car, or as I like to call them, nap pods. I understand how this can be scary because some car company is going to know where you're going. They will be tracking you constantly. Also, these self-driving cars would have cameras on them all over them. That means there's literally billions of cameras all over the world just watching people. Who's controlling that footage? And what if someone hacks your car and kills you for poops and giggles? But on the other hand, I really want a car that lets me eat pasta and fall asleep while I'm on my way to where I need to go. I guess you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Number eight. Robots. You know what's crazy about this one? It's like we know that the robots are coming to kill us, but we keep making them. You know we can just stop making them. We already have Netflix and Uber Eats. Guys, we won. We don't need to make any more innovations. Well, I don't really know how much I need to say about this one, other than if I get the opportunity to sell out the human race and become a pet to one of our machine overlords, I'm taking that opportunity in a heartbeat. We already have robots now, but they're advancing more and more more every day and becoming more powerful and getting better and better artificial intelligence. Some people speculate that we'll be able to create robots that have artificial intelligence as sophisticated as a human's by 2025. And all the big dogs are in on this. In 2014, Google purchased artificial intelligence company Deep Blue and has been working on AI that can teach itself to play video games and make art. So who wants to hit up Disneyland before we're all on fire? Number seven, worldwide Wi-Fi. It's definitely coming. Coming, having blazing fast internet anywhere with you. It doesn't matter if you're at home, you're underground, in the office, out with friends, it will always be with you. God, I sound like a deodorant commercial. I mean, it sounds great. We would never need to worry about download speeds and we could turn binge watching TV shows into a national sport. But if this happens, we're gonna become so reliant on it that we will base our infrastructure all around this constant internet concept. So what happens if it goes down? What would people do if one day everything went from high speed to not a single drop of internet? I mean, the internet well became so dry that you couldn't even download Pong on your cheese grater Mac Pro. It would be utter chaos, the starting of the apocalypse. Everyone would be running around the streets like chickens with their heads cut off. You guys better start stockpiling your beans and Blu-rays now, just in case this pops off. Number six, subdermal identification chips. So what if everything you ever did was recorded on a little device every time you pooped? All the times you said you were gonna start getting in shape but you just sat on the toilet pooping? Or when you told your friends you were late because of traffic but it was because you had a last minute massive poop that threw your schedule off? 
Well, a lot of people think that these future devices aren't that far away. They should have a lot of positive uses. If you have all your information in one place, it would make it super easy to see a doctor. Or you could be connected to your bank account and it would streamline paying for everything in your life. But think of how easy it would be to steal someone's identity. You could just knock them out take the chip out, and then leave them in a ditch somewhere, next thing you know, there's a much less handsome Che Dorena walking around making everyone think I'm less handsome. Number five, exoskeletons. You've probably seen these ones in movies like Elysium or The Matrix Reloaded, where people walk around in super cool exoskeletons being all strong and junk. Well, various militaries around the world have been working on this kind of tech, so it's not that far into the future before we're gonna start seeing these things implemented in our daily lives. You won't need to worry about throwing your back out working your warehouse job because you're going to be wearing some crazy robo suit that helps you lift 10,000 pounds. The scary thing about this is that one day some dude who dropped out of high school who's working in a warehouse is going to have access to tech that almost makes him a superhero. There's going to be endless videos of Kyle's hopped up on too much monster energy smashing stuff on their smoke breaks. Number four, super kids. No, this one isn't a cheesy spin off of the Super Friends show, but in the future, Future, we'll probably see a generation of super kids. If you decide to have a baby, instead of hoping that it bakes right, you'll be able to pay someone to put all the pieces exactly where you want them. You'll be able to genetically modify your kid in the womb. Give it all the upgrades you want. We're gonna have babies that look like they can bend metal over their abs before they even do their first chin up. I don't know if I'm ever gonna have kids, but if I do, I'm definitely gonna give them whatever gene lets them dunk. Number three. 3D printers. Some of you are probably out there like, but Che, we already have 3D printers. Those aren't from the future, those are from right now. Well, I'm talking about 3D printers from the future. Right now, the tech is very crude. You can only make so much, but in the future, we might be able to print all sorts of stuff, from full functioning PlayStations to, I don't know, a human heart? Yeah, some people think that we'll be able to print organs in the future. We could print entire people. Then all of you plebs out there finally don't have an excuse for not being able to get a girlfriend. You can just make one. Number two, free thinking artificial intelligence. So we already have small forms of AI, things that can perform some sort of boring repetitive task like identifying patterns or organizing data. But what about when all this stuff starts thinking on its own? Now everyone thinks it's going to kill us. It'll probably be like Skynet, but way less sexy than 80s arm. But in reality, we have no idea what a free thinking AI would want. It has no need to eat or reproduce, it has no sex drive, none of the driving factors that make humans do any of the things we do. So it's really our ego showing when we try to predict an AI's motivation. This thing would literally be a god and its desires would be far beyond our understanding. So I'm just hoping he's cool and he wants to chill and hang out and stuff. Number one, the transcendence. So if number two happens, there might be an opportunity for all of us to partake in the transcendence, where we leave our bodies and meld our consciousness with an all powerful AI. All our minds connected in one giant hive. All of our thoughts would be shared with billions and everyone would be part of one being. That would mean all your weird perverted thoughts would be open to everyone like a library, you sick freaks. Is this something you guys think you would want to be a part of? Number 10, virtual reality clones. Data is constantly being compiled on all of us. Every app you use or website you go to is keeping info on you. That means Uber knows where you like to go, Netflix knows what you like to watch, and Google knows all the weird porn you search, you sick freaks. So what could happen is all this data compiled on you could be saved and transferred into a program that would make a virtual version of you that's very similar to yourself. It could walk like you, talk like you, and even watch the same weird porn as you, you sick freak. This kind of scares me, but I think it's something people would want. Why would you mourn someone when you can build a virtual clone of them in a virtual space? You would never need to miss anybody. This also means that some companies would have the ability to recreate any person they want. They would know everything about that person and have a virtual clone of them. Everyone who works at this company would know that you're a sick 
freak. Coming into number 9 we have the pilot. This portrait of a World War 2 pilot in its original 1940s frame was listed on eBay. The listing reads, this haunted picture holds the energy of an old pilot's ghost. When the haunted picture is set out on display, many people have witnessed a man dressed in uniform appear in hallways and doorways of the house. A deep man's voice can be heard at late hours of the night. I can usually hear military jargon being shouted at fast speed. I don't know why this energy is so attached to this haunted picture or what this ghost is trying to tell me. Weird. The listing also claimed that only those with the quote unquote gift would be able to feel the presence. Rightio then. Coming into number 8 we have the World War 2 wheelchair. This wheelchair is haunted by the ghosts of hundreds of wounded soldiers. Why? Well, the chair was the property of a military hospital during World War 2, and it is thought that it contains the spirits of those who sat in it. Sure. Chair owner Neil Packer said that when he sat in the chair, he felt as if his leg had been amputated. Weird. He said that another man's leg went blue after a brief stint in the chair. Another sitter said that she felt like her chest was heavy as if she'd had an infection. The chair was actually taken onto British television too. It featured on This Morning with hosts Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby, and Phil decided to sit in it. Honestly, I feel like if I've learned anything across my four years of working on most amazing top 10 is that you should never sit in the haunted chair. Does anyone remember the Busby stoop chair now chained to the ceiling in Yorkshire? Like seriously, don't sit in the haunted chairs. But unfortunately Phil couldn't have listened to me because I made this video after he sat in it and I don't think he watches the channel but maybe he should. Nonetheless, he sat in the chair on live TV and this was his reaction. The chair? Yeah. Um, but uh, How do you feel? I feel like <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> don't be annoying. Just joking, this is actually what he said after making that face. Perfectly normal. Really? Yeah, absolutely. No don't. twinges in your leg? I have no I have no twinges, I have no uh, I have absolutely nothing going on here what whatsoever. <laughs> Coming into number seven, we have the pigeon foot. Ah uh -huh. That's not a pigeon sound. Do pigeons make sounds? I don't know. You'll actually find a lot of severed pigeon feet in war museums across the world. Why? Because birds played a very big part in the war. Pigeons were used to send secret messages, but as you can imagine, that brought about a whole new layer of chaos that came from trying to intercept them and stop enemies finding them. One pigeon that failed in its delivery mission was discovered in 2012 in an English chimney in Surrey. David Martin was cleaning his block's chimney and found that one dead bird had had a red capsule on its leg. He opened it up and discovered a secret World War II era message written in code. Eventually the code was cracked and the message was discovered to say, hit Jerry's right or reserve battery here. Already know electrical engineers headquarters, troops, panzers, batteries, engineers here. Of course, Jerry, I have to say, was the nickname for the Germans, for those of you watching that didn't know. So, vital intel that was never delivered on account of dead pigeon in chimney. Coming into number 6 we have the trench raiding club. War is savage and that's pretty evident in the existence of this raiding club. Many old weapons were found after the war and often these clubs were found. Now they're usually made from wood wrapped in sharp pieces of metal which to me sounds very medieval. Clubs and flails have been used since times of early warfare. While trench clubs were largely used in world war 1, some were still found after world war 2 and honestly I can't believe in the 20th century we were still whacking each other with spikes on sticks. Although, thinking about that, I maybe would prefer meeting those than some of the other World War II weapons. Although, actually, maybe the sticks. No, the stick. Brutal. It's brutal. It's all brutal. It's all got very morbid too. I'm imagining being hit with a big stick. Ah. Coming into number five, we have the trumpets that started the war. These scary wartime objects were actually from an ancient period in history. In 1922, King Tutankhamun's tomb was opened. Now, this was a period between the first and second war. A lot of people were very nervous about the whole thing, and perhaps for good reason, as this is where the legends of the curse of the pharaoh began. Among the artifacts. In fact, silver, wooden and bronze trumpets were found. Now the trumpets were played and recorded in 1939 on British radio, the BBC. A few months after it was broadcasted, World War II broke out and the announcement was delivered to the British public on the same radio station. This has led many to believe that the trumpets are cursed and actually have the power to summon war. This is one of the only instances where I would ever be like, do not play the trumpets. Usually I wholeheartedly encourage trumpet playing. I love trumpets, they're great, but war trumpets are bad. Yes, they are. Coming into number four, we have the lost bombs and the 
found bombs, but mostly the lost bombs are the concern. So a lot of worrying undetonated bombs have been found since World War II. Just last year, 1,000 people were evacuated from their homes in Cologne in Germany when a World War II bomb was discovered near a petrol station in the city, which doesn't sound like a great combination. That wasn't even the worst of it. In 2011, 45,000 people were forced to evacuate their homes when a drought revealed a big unexploded bomb in the Rhine near Koblenz. The scary fact is that thousands of unexploded bombs are still sitting hidden and buried across Europe. Do you want to hear a scary statistic? 70 years later, more than 2,000 tons of unexploded munitions are uncovered on German soil every year. Terrifying. Sadly, coming into number three, we have the body parts. It wasn't just the Nazis mutating their enemies, a lot of countries were at it. It seems that actually a vast amount of Americans who took part in World War II and were stationed in the Pacific would wear Japanese body parts as trophies, which is disgusting. Luckily, the majority of these have been destroyed, but necklaces made of Japanese teeth were fashioned. Ears were pinned to military belts, and it is even said that Franklin Roosevelt, the President of the United States, was given the gift of a letter opener made out of a Japanese soldier's arm. A bunch of trophy skulls were found after the war. Skulls of dead Japanese people were given to Americans as gifts. Here's a picture of a woman that appeared in a magazine in 1944 that shows her writing to her sweetheart to thank him for the skull. Honestly, I can think of more romantic gifts, but like, whatever. Actually, not whatever. Judging you, skulls, gross. Stick to flowers, please. Coming into number two, I do love a ghost ship. We have the Queen Mary. So, the Queen Mary is more than just a haunted object, it's a haunted object filled with hundreds of other haunted objects and floating. When World War II began, British ship the Queen Mary was converted into a transportation ship for Allied troops. She transported 800,000 troops to Europe in her time. Unfortunately, though, she was involved in an accident which killed 239 people. The Queen Mary was retired in 1967 after another stint as an ocean liner. She is now a permanently docked hotel in Long Beach, California, but it is said that she is mercilessly haunted by a number of souls. It seems the swimming pool is haunted by the spirit of a young girl. A first class passenger, dubbed the woman in white, glides across the floor of the Queen's salon in a long dancing gown. The ship has had to retire the use of room B340 because there have been so many complaints of its haunting. Those who have been on the ship tend to report ghostly goings on, and they have done for decades. Ever since the ship was a working transport ship, people have been spotting ghosts. Scary, but I do love a ghost boat. I don't love this at number one though, this is absolutely horrifying. I only learned about this today. I am talking about the blood flag. The blood flag, or the Blutfahne, was a Nazi swastika flag that was regularly carried during the Third Reich and it served as a ceremony piece for the party. The flag was the original carried in Hitler's failed Munich Beer Hall Putsch in November 1923. It was soaked in the blood of an SA member who was killed in the attack. The flag was then saved and had the names of 16 people who died in the putsch sewn in. The flag was kept at Nazi HQ in Munich, but was taken out for ceremonies in which other flags were bought to touch it in order to like consecrate them. It is said that the blood flag touched all of the banners in the Nuremberg rallies. The blood flag, interestingly, hasn't been seen since the end of the war. Nobody knows where it went. Creepy. So guys, that was that. That was the top 10 scary World War II objects for you. Before I read comments, I want to introduce you to one more object that I couldn't find a way to fit into my list. Meet this chap. It's Rupert. He's a lost Rupert. He's Rupert to me anyway. British troops called him Rupert and the Americans called him Oscar. This is an allied used dummy. They would use paratrooper dummies to cause confusion and chaos amongst German troops. So they would drop these Ruperts or Oscars onto land and then Germans would be like, ah, go get them. But no. Just a dummy. All right, coming in at number 10, we have the glass jar. As we know, the Americans, with the support from the Air Allies, dropped the horrifying atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. The attacks killed over 200,000 people horribly, and the cities were absolutely decimated. Imagine how fragile human flesh is when it comes to heat, and then imagine how hot something would need to be to melt glass. Hot, right? 
Have a look at this glass jar found in the Hiroshima aftermath. It seems that heat of approximately 1500 degrees centigrade 2700 degrees Fahrenheit is required to produce this level of deformity. Scientific examination showed that a virtually instantaneous heat wave struck this object and passed as quickly as it had arrived. Basically the jar resumed its solidified form without leaving stress marks. The flash heat incinerated many many people on the spot too which is absolutely horrible and this jar just goes to show how hot it really really was. Always my thoughts going out to the cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima many years later. Moving into number 9 we have the Roswell UFO incident that took place in 1947. Take a look at this. This came crashing down to earth and if you search this into Google you can find these images as well. Clearly looks like an alien and also you can see more UFO pictures. Can this really be a UFO crash site? Well there are obviously many conspiracy theories around this crash because the US military stated that it is a United States Army Air Force balloon crash while other say that this might be one huge cover up and it's actually an alien spacecraft. What do you guys believe? I'm going with it might be an alien spacecraft. In at number 8 we have a piece of the moon. It's always scarier taking pieces of the moon because you just never know what type of airborne bacteria can live on it. There was actually a lunar meteorite found in northern Africa not too long ago and just a tiny piece of it sold for more than $600,000. Imagine a piece of the moon just fell into your backyard making you instantly a millionaire. There hasn't been a long term human exposure to the lunar environment but apparently the exposure to lunar dust can actually should result in severe health risks from direct exposure or exposure from over time. So saying that, whoever owns a piece of the moon, hopefully they're keeping it well contaminated. All right, number seven. You guys saw it in the intro of this video. You saw a little clip of it, but let's talk about the 2017, which was uh, not too long ago. While well, I'm talking about the discovery of the Uma Uma, which was the first interstellar object ever detected in our solar system. Aumuamua. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing it right. Probably not, but in Hawaiian, it actually translates to first time visitor from far away. Of course, when this object was made public, millions of people questioned, is it aliens? Others ask, where did it come from? Or what does this mean for us? Could this be an invasion on Earth? Well, scientists from Harvard University believe yes. This could actually be signs of alien civilization. When you hear about a bold claim like that, Coming from Harvard scientists, it actually makes you wonder. When Aumauma traveled through our solar system, it actually didn't travel on a normal path. And as you know, as normal objects would travel in, and it's usually due to the sun's gravity, but instead it, it made its own path. So it makes us think maybe this thing was powered by some sort of thrusters. So it could be plausible that it was a spacecraft. Number six, we have a satellite that fell to Earth. Have you guys heard the story of the Cosmos 954? Well, me neither. I had to do the research for this one. Well, back in January 24th in 1978, a Soviet satellite malfunctioned, which prevented a safe separation of its onboard nuclear reactor. So pieces of the cosmos entered Earth, shattering around northern Canada. Now, this is pretty messed up. Luckily, no one was killed by this. Just imagine if like North Korean satellite crashed on American soil. I mean, that might spark World War III. So there is actually a law that everyone has to follow when it comes to space. So under the terms of the 1972 Space Liability Convention, whoever launched an object into outer space is liable for damages caused by that object. So saying that, the Canadian government billed the Soviet Union over six million dollars for the cost of the cleanup and also for additional compensation for future unpredicted expenses. But the USSR paid just three million dollars. From a failed USSR satellite to something that you would never expect coming from space, or should I say you wouldn't expect someone coming from space. An alien? Well, at number five, let me introduce you guys to Fear Felix, who is not an alien. He's just a crazy person. Jack away. Speed 725. 
looks at a stable. Is this real life right now? That is absolutely insane. Why? I have been skydiving, but I jumped from like eight to 10,000 feet. Felix jumped from over 128,000 feet. This guy is absolutely nuts. I think this guy almost reached the moon. Okay, may maybe not quite. <laughs> this guy wasn't inside of Earth when he jumped, but luckily for him, it was a huge success. Okay, let me take you guys over to Mongolia and at number four. There was this two-ton object that crashed to the earth near the Mongolian capital back in 2019. This object was added to the MUFON witness database, which is actually the UFO network database. I didn't know there was a UFO database. How many aliens are on it? So people are actually believing this foreign object might be a UFO. The object looks like it has a rocket or a jet engine. It seems like the object came crashing down in a field of cows and no one knows what it is. On Reddit, people believed that it might be a hydrogen tank and a lot of people think that this picture might actually be fake because one person pointed out, where is the crater that a heavy and large object would create? I mean, that is a pretty valid point. It's time to time travel for a sec in at number three. Let me take you guys back like 80,000 years ago. I know it's a long time. And let's talk about the Huba meteorite that came crashing down on Earth. It wasn't until 1920 when a farmer found it on his field. Well, this thing weighs 60 tons and it is known to be the largest known meteorite to be found. Today, it has been turned into a national monument. So now it's a great tourist attraction. Moving into number two, let's talk about the meteorite that changed the history on Earth, like literally. More specifically, well, let's talk about the massive meteorite that might have been responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. If you guys don't believe this theory, what wiped out the dinosaurs, let me know in the comment section below and be as stupid as you guys want. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see what you guys type down there. Okay, that asteroid that you guys saw must have been huge if it left no dinosaurs behind. It is believed that the asteroid or comet was about 11 to 81 kilometers long, which is super massive. Finally, number one, I saved the scariest for last. NASA actually predicts that in 2023, there's going to be an asteroid that is on a collision course with Earth that can do some pretty serious damage. The asteroid is twice the size of Big Ben, and uh, I looked up Big Ben, and Big Ben is massive. <laughs> and then imagine Big Ben, and then times it by two, and then adding like fire all around it. That can ruin a whole city. Imagine if that hit like a dense city like New York, or what about if it hit like Shanghai, China? A population of over 24 million people. That can wipe out everyone. My biggest question right now is how accurate is NASA? Um, I'm hoping that they're not too accurate. But then again, if NASA wasn't accurate, I don't know if that would be more scarier. So starting off this list strong, in at number 10, let's talk about the 1954 meteorite that fell from space and it actually hit someone. This right here is Anne Elizabeth Fowler Hodge. She became a part of history when she survived being struck by a fragment of a meteorite. I mean, how many people can say that? The Silicago meteorite is the first documented extraterrestrial object to have injured a human being. So let me tell you guys what happened. A piece of this meteorite crashed through the roof of a farmhouse located in Alabama and it bounced off a large wooden console radio and then it hit Hodges while she was napping on the couch. Imagine like that's how you woke up. You woke up by being hit by a piece of meteorite that came from outer space. This made headline news and I was looking into what happened to that meteorite because maybe that woman can sell it and become super super rich. Well, I'm not exactly sure on how much they sell for but uh, probably a lot right. But this meteorite was actually confiscated by the police who turned it over to the United States Air Force. So yeah, this woman lucked out. I don't know why she wasn't able to keep it. In our ninth spot today, we have the giant spoon. Don't worry, when Elon Musk sends us to Mars, you won't have to pack your cutlery. Why? Well, Mars has a number of giant spoons. Let me explain. In 2015, Mars's Curiosity rover discovered what appeared to be a large floating spoon on Mars. Later on, they found another spoon, but this time it wasn't floating and it was much smaller. Unfortunately, it's not actually a spoon, but just rocks that happen to look eerily exactly like one. Either way, it's still pretty weird. 
Coming in at number eight, we have the blueberries. And no, the tiny small blue fruit were not found on Mars. Blueberries is the name given to these tiny little spheres found on Mars. In 2004, the Mars Opportunity rover spotted these small spheres near the Fram crater. They are about one to two inches across, so they're about the size of actual blueberries. On top of that, they do have a blue hue to them. Now, these things are weird for a number of reasons. One, the blueberries found within the soil are smaller than the ones found in the outcrops. Why? We don't know. And two, the size of the blueberries also decrease with decreasing latitude. Why? Again, we don't know. They also don't have any idea what caused them to form these perfect round spheres. Obviously, they have some theories, but they have never been proven. In our seventh spot today, we have the collection of spheres. Now, don't be fooled, these are different than the little blueberry spheres that I just finished talking about. These were discovered in 2012 at an outcrop named Kirkwood. Basically, they look like a bunch of blister-like bumps on the ground. These are even more mysterious than the blueberries, though. In fact, rover mission principal investigator Steve Squires said, and I quote, this is one of the most extraordinary pictures from the whole mission. Kirkwood is chock full of a dense accumulation of these small spherical objects. Of course, we immediately thought of the blueberries, but this is something different. We never have seen such a dense accumulation of spherules in a rock outcrop on Mars. And again, they don't know what these are or what caused their formation. According to NASA, these spheres are different than the blueberries in a number of ways. They differ in concentration, distribution, and structure. That's why they call this collection so puzzling. Moving on to number six, we have the meteorite. On January 6, 2005, the Opportunity rover found a basketball-sized meteorite on Mars. This is said to be the first meteorite ever discovered on another planet. Upon further investigation, they found that the meteorite was composed of iron and nickel. Now, here's the thing. This find was alarming for a number of reasons. One, according to Steve Squires, and I quote, Mars should be hit by a lot more rocky meteorites than iron meteorites. Continuing on, he said, we haven't really thought much about meteorites until now, but this discovery has really opened our eyes to the question. It was a huge surprise. Even NASA workers were baffled by this finding. And now they're doing more investigation on Mars and meteorites. In the end, this can help us learn more about space. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the plastic. It's bad enough that we have already polluted one planet with plastic and garbage, but it looks like we're already starting to pollute another as well. So when the Curiosity rover first landed on Mars, they found a piece of plastic on the surface and were like, what the hell? It literally confused NASA. They were like, nah, this can't be plastic wrap, but it was. And the explanation on how it got there is pretty lame, sorry. And it's not really a mysterious one, but basically the plastic came from the rover itself. A piece of wrap from a cable came loose during landing. But like I said before, let's not pollute another planet. Plastic definitely does not belong on another planet or in space at all for that fact. Coming in at number four, we have the face on Mars. Now this is probably the creepiest thing ever found on Mars. It was discovered in 1976 when NASA's Viking 1 orbiter flew by Mars. It was taking photos and managed to take a photo of what appears to be a face on Mars. Like it straight up has two evil dark eyes, a nose, and a mouth. People think that maybe this is an alien built monument on Mars to worship an alien god. But of course, NASA just says it naturally formed due to erosion. Either way, it's hella creepy. Coming in at number three, we have the thigh bone. This one is another pretty creepy one, not gonna lie. Back in 2014, NASA's Curiosity rover sent back multiple photos to Earth. In one of the photos, there seemed to be something sticking out of a collection of rocks, half buried in the dust. Zooming in, it looks like a freaking femur bone from a human thigh, which is scary for a number of reasons. One, why is there a human bone on Mars? Number two, what happened to the person that the bone belonged to? Then people were like, whoa, what if it's an alien bone? especially since it's more crooked than straight like a human femur is. So people are like, yeah, that has to be from an alien. Well, it turns out that upon further investigation, the bone is none other than a rock, not Dwayne the Rock Johnson, <laughs> get it? <laughs> Scientists claim that the shape was created through erosion by wind or water. I know, very anticlimactic. 
But that doesn't stop people from thinking it's still a real bone. I mean, for all we know, NASA could be lying to us, just saying. Moving on to number two, we have the ancient god. In 2015, NASA's Mars Opportunity rover took this picture. It was then uploaded on the Mars' exploration website. Upon closer inspection, people thought that one of the rocks in the photo had a weird design carved into it. In fact, they claimed that it looked like an ancient god's head. I mean, I can see it. The rock has a full on wavy beard and everything. To UFO enthusiasts, this was more evidence that aliens live on Mars and are carving sculptures and busts of people that they worship. And in our number one spot, we have the person. In 2007, people went nuts when the spirit rover snapped this eerie photo on the planet. It appears to be a human-like figure perched up on a rock. NASA immediately denied this and said, it's just a rock, people, calm down. But that didn't stop UFO enthusiasts. They believe that this rock is actually a statue of a female figure made by aliens. Maybe this is a god that the aliens bow down to. Not gonna lie, it eerily does look like a female. And that's not the only time a person has been spotted on Mars. They also captured this image as well, which literally looks like an eerie ghostly woman walking on Mars. Like that one is too creepy. It's like you can't look at that and tell me it's just a rock. I don't believe it. Nice try, NASA. Starting off this countdown, we have the butt crack rock. This has to be the funniest thing found on Mars. But basically in February of 2021, NASA's Perseverance rover was on the planet taking photos. That's when it took a photo of a plump rock with a crack running down it. And immediately people started making jokes saying that the rock looks like a big old butt crack. In fact, it started when software engineer Kevin Gill saw the rock, tweeted a picture of it and called it the butt crack rock. From there, it kind of just, you know, snowballed. Glad to see though that people still have a good sense of humor. For that alone, this man deserves a raise. Like, not all heroes wear capes. Number nine, the Devil's Claw. In the 1980s, a group of explorers took to New Zealand to look underneath the mountain. What they found was probably something that they never would have expected. Eventually, they came upon pieces of bones, attached to flesh, attached to what looked like a dinosaur's claw. It had three long fingers, each with their own long pointed claw, forming an entire hand. But like most dinosaur bones, this one didn't look like it had been dead for centuries. Instead, looking like it had only died very recently. The whole team was now stuck in this deep dark cave under a mountain surrounded by remains of what appeared to be some sort of modern dinosaur or monster. Some people that have seen the hand say that it reminds them of the devil and looks like it is his hand that somehow appeared in the ground of New Zealand. Others believing it to come from an ancient bird that used to roam there. Number 8. The Betts Mystery Sphere The so called Betts Mystery Sphere was found in the 70s and is exactly as its name suggests, a sphere, being completely smooth except for a triangular symbol. When they found it, they thought it was space junk and they picked it up and took it home. But then they noticed it had some strange properties, like seeming to hum and resonate with certain noises like guitar playing. They also realized that when rolled, it would change directions on its own and often return back to where it had started. When this was discovered, the Betts family were swarmed by media wanting to get a look at the mystery sphere. Many people witnessing the sphere's strange activities and the way it would completely change directions in no time at all with no outside influence. To this day, it's not known what the Betts mystery sphere actually was. It's still a mystery, some people citing it as some sort of alien orb. Unfortunately, we probably never will get a true answer as the current whereabouts of the sphere are unknown. Number 7. Prosthetics Archaeologists are no strangers to digging up weird bodies and burial sites, but this one seemed especially strange. In the north of Italy, they found a body, among others, that seemed to come from the 6th to 8th century. Obviously, this alone isn't weird, they find bodies all the time. What was weird is that the man had an amputated hand, and he had a knife as his prosthetic. Within the grave, they also found the skeleton of a headless horse and several greyhound dogs. Upon examining the man, they found that his body was an incredible story of survival for a person who had received an amputation before proper medical practices and antibiotics 
existed. They knew that the knife was a prosthetic and not just something he'd been buried with because the arm and knife both showed the signs of having been attached for a long time. Personally, I think this guy was probably the inspiration for Merle Dixon on The Walking Dead. Number 6. The Black Sarcophagus Around 4 years ago, a meme went around the internet about drinking the sarcophagus juice. So where did that come from? The juice came from the black sarcophagus. In summer of 2018, they found a massive black granite sarcophagus buried deep in Egypt, untouched for around 2,000 years. Many people believe that the sarcophagus would contain some deadly curse and that we should not open it. But they did open it and they found, well, juice. It contained three skeletons and a red-brown sewage-like liquid, apparently giving off a completely unbearable stench. It was so bad that when they first opened it only two inches, everyone vacated the premises. So did the tomb have a curse in it? Well, one of the archaeologists said the following, We've opened it and thank god the world has not fallen into darkness. Well, I think he may have said that a bit prematurely. With the state of the world today, we may want to go back and consider that Maybe it was the sarcophagus juice that cursed us. Number 5. Williams Enigmalith In the late 1990s, an electrical engineer called John J. Williams was on a hike when he saw a strange rock sticking out of the ground. How it would have looked different from any other rock on a hike, I'm not sure, but he proceeded to dig it up, and he found that it was in fact very strange. That's because it appeared to have a metal piece attached to it, resembling the male end of an electrical plug. It became known as the Williams Enigmalith, Enigmalith being a combination of the words enigma and monolith. He consulted both an engineer and a geologist to take a look at the rock and they revealed that the electrical component within the granite showed no sign of ever having been glued or welded. The rock itself looking to be around 100,000 years old. Williams has apparently encouraged scientists to examine the rock, but none have ever stepped up to do so. Maybe because they don't want us to know the truth about it. Number 4. Alien Skulls If you've seen Indiana Jones, then you're probably familiar with the concept of the Crystal Skulls. Skulls with elongated heads that are going to be used to somehow conquer the world or something. Well, it turns out that these skulls aren't just a work of fiction, and if you sat around watching History Channel with your dad as a kid, then you may have seen the special they did about the search for the real Crystal Skulls. Well, in a Mexican graveyard, researchers found a total of 25 skulls, 13 of them having the these long headed malformations. When you look at pictures of them, they definitely look like they must be something alien, coming from another planet. Researchers, however, believe that this comes from a cultural practice of stretching the skull, as it was maybe a sign of higher social status. Personally, I'm gonna keep believing it was aliens. So far, no real confirmed crystal skulls have actually been found, but maybe someday they will. Number 3. Antikythera Mechanism In the early 1900s, this this 2,000 year old artifact was found off the coast of the Greek island Antikythera. It is shaped like a circular gear with other mechanisms seeming to attach to it. Scientists have been trying for decades to try and figure out what this is and what it could have possibly been used for around 2,000 years ago, some describing it to be the first ever computer. While it may not look like a work of art to you, a professor at Cardiff University said it was extraordinary, describing how everything was perfect and seemed to be done very carefully, even going so far as to compare it to the Mona Lisa. Upon close study, it seems to track the solar system, like the time of day, as well as even eclipses. It's the most complex piece of machinery from its era, and nothing similar came around for a very long time. Some people bringing into question the idea that humans had some sort of outside influence to help build this computer. Number 2. The Voynich Manuscript If you're a fan of rare books, then this one is for you. The Voynich manuscript was rediscovered in the early 1900s, though it had previously circulated through the hands of emperors and rulers. To this day, we don't actually know what the book says, as it is written in an indecipherable language and its illustrations are just as confusing. The pictures include things like otherworldly plants, non-existent
constellations and naked women swimming through strange tubes and green baths. Almost every page includes these fantastical drawings and strange texts about things that seem like they must come from another world. The book was written back in the 15th to 16th century, and perhaps the person who wrote it had a window to another planet, or perhaps a parallel universe. Copies of the manuscript are now available to purchase along with historical and scientific perspectives on the book if you're interested in taking a look for yourself. Number 1. Vampire Skeletons Vampire imagery and stories have been around for centuries, even spanning all the way back to the Bible if you saw my other video on that. But as it stands, we don't really have any true evidence or proof of the existence of vampires, unless you think the Twilight series was a documentary. In Poland, one team excavated a group of bodies that seemed to date back to the 14th century. Again, not super weird, their job is basically finding bodies. But what was different about these ones is that they appear to have been taken apart after their death, not by grave robbers or sight disturbers, but immediately after they had died and were being buried. They had their heads removed and had been punctured through the spine, their heads being held under large stones. Researchers believe that this is due to the fear of vampires, and the people burying them believe them to be blood sucking monsters and buried them this way to prevent them from ever rising up again. Well, I guess it worked. Mm -hmm. 